the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Monday, July 19th, 2021 years after zero. Back in the studio. Excited to be here. Massive weekend down in Texas. Massive thank you to not only Caltown, Fort Worth, but also Houston and everybody in between that we get a chance to meet, interact with, and hopefully entertain a little bit as... SmackDown took over Houston, and then Money in the Bank took over Fort Worth. Texas is, it is, I mean, Texas is a, it's a fantastic place. It is yep. very different. Okay, it is very different. You are in a, we were in Florida for a while uh, because uh, of Tampa and SmackDown, and I was in Orlando a little bit for NXT. So during this entire COVID situation that we all have had to kind of battle through, I've gotten a chance to see how Indiana has handled it. I got a chance to see how Florida handled it. And then I just recently got a chance to see how Texas just operates. Mm-hmm. I'll tell good fucking people, they're very nice to us. They were very, very nice to us. We were dressed like complete outcasts. Everybody in Cowtown <laughs> uh-huh. knew we were not from Cowtown. We saw longhorn steer cows. Texas longhorns, okay? Hook them. Longest of all time. Big ones. From tip to tip, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. 100 inches. <laughs> okay, tip to tip. We're talking whenever whenever she walked, I was told by uh, Cynthia, who was the... Uh, the traffic guard outside of um, Dickie's Arena, who yeah. Dickie's Arena is where all these cattle get auctioned and sold mm-hmm. and everything. And right outside, there's a whole barn. So we were we were doing Money in the Bank last night from a very prestigious cattle land. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 100 inches tip to tip, longest of all time. The current representative of longest uh, Texas Longhorn from tip to tip, 87 inches. Damn, wow. That's the biggest walk. We saw a couple walking down the middle of the goddamn road in Fort Worth over there in stockyards in Fort Worth. Probably, I, I don't know, 65, 70 inches. Uh-huh. Okay. Some big bodies. 30 of them with five Doc Holidays on horses. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ryan, this is in the middle of the road. We saw this happen. Just walk down, right through the road, right through town, down the other way. There's shops. There's uh, there was bars. There was restaurants. There was actual cowboys. You know, there was actual cowboys walking around with their goddamn belt buckles. You know, trying to shoot their shot on some ladies potentially working down there. It was out of control in Fort Worth. I guess everybody else in WWE stayed over in Dallas because that's where the uh, hotel was. I want to let them know the fact that we got an Airbnb in Fort Worth was a great decision. Yes. I don't know if I'll ever be back in Fort Worth ever again. And while we were in Fort Worth, walking around Fort Worth saying, wow, this is fucking live music everywhere. Yeah. It's in live music everywhere. Unbelievable. It was amazing this you're in a movie you're picked up and dropped into a cowboy movie set Mm -hmm. that's exactly what it was as we're walking around me connor and zito and we got a lot of eyes i think while we're walking around also people knew us down there shout out shout out down there did not think that was our demographic like full fucking real cowboy but some people knew us as we're walking around they're going Probably never going to be back to Fort Worth, which mm-hmm. is a damn shame. Yeah. Unless the WWE goes back to Fort Worth, we would probably never go. They, you only get so many days off. Since I went to Fort Worth, I don't know if I'll go back to Fort Worth, but I would like to at some point when I retire, I'm going back to Fort Worth. Like it, Fort Worth is a place, if you're a traveler, I think you would absolutely love it. But while we're walking around, like probably never going back, let's enjoy the shit out of this. Yep. That town was fantastic. At Boston Connor traveled this weekend. Can't thank you enough, buddy. What a blast. Huh? The WWE put on some incredible shows you got a chance to like be there it was a pretty cool little moment yeah right? i appreciate you bringing me along man that uh, i was saying to you and z and everyone that was the first time i've been in a full stadium since 2019 so just that atmosphere again oh, yeah. in houston and obviously money in the bank last night was wild but that atmosphere being around it you know goosebump feelings basically the entire weekend because of all the cool shit we got the 14,496 people in houston yeah Okay, that doesn't include all the security, which was a lot. Just probably add another hundred in there. So it's like it was. It was just like 
you got a chance to see it on TV, Madison Square Garden. Yes. When the Knicks fans came back, got a chance to see it UFC. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been some events where you uh, college baseball, you mm -hmm. heard a couple, but being in it for the first time, especially where I now Connor was down on the bot lower level too, so he wasn't really up in there. But me sitting like on the floor of that thing, and it's you really just feel the entire. Now there's a stage on one side in. For the history of WWE, I've been going to events now for a long time as a fan, now being a part of it. There's parts of the arena that you can't sell, obviously, for whether it's staging purposes, visual pur pur uh, purposes, optics. Houston, it felt like they sold every single seat. In oh, there. yeah. And it, I got a chance, like, when I sat down early. I got an entrance, by the way. Pretty cool. It was pretty sweet. Very, incredible. very yeah. thankful to everybody Great in the pop. arenas that were very nice to me. Too nice to me. It was fantastic. Thank you so much. Came out to Seven Nation Army because it wasn't on TV. It's just in the arena. So they said, any song you want, you can come out to. And I'm like, okay, give me the yeah. sing-along song. Mm -hmm. Crowd yeah, so let's go ahead and have a good time with this. And as soon as that, boom, boom the place, boom, 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 to the song they're cheering. Boom. So I kind of steal Jack White's pop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but I apologize. But the people were very nice. Just going out there and, and looking around and like taking it in. Then I sat down and when I think it was uh, Roman, I think Roman, no, Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon came out. Mm -hmm. Whenever Vince, eh, it might have been Vince or Roman, I forget who, which one. But as I looked around and just saw everybody on their feet, screaming it was like we're back yeah it was so cool so cool yeah. it was so so cool like and obviously you know i mean roman reigns greatest of all time yeah, greatest uh -huh. of all time we go let's not get it twisted okay uh -huh. universal champion he smashes him he stacks him he pins him he gets out of, i mean he just he's the guy all mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I saw a lot of lust and a lot of eyes, by the way, from the ladies that were potentially booing Roman when he came out. I saw men booing Roman Reigns, who, with one swing of his hand, could have knocked out five, six of them straight. I mean, yep. you're talking about the guy in Roman Reigns right now. And I think, I'm not 100% sure, because as you probably heard, I was not told of anything. Mm -hmm. So people are wondering, I think, that, and not a lot of people, but a lot of people on the internet, after hearing the clip, were wondering, uh, was, was that a genuine, what was that? They did not tell me anything. And allegedly, all day, there was a lot tighter lips around every situation. So I am not a part of any of the, like, I don't go to any of the meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't go to any, I, don't, I know, I rarely know what potentially is going to happen in the grand scheme. Like, I, I know next to nothing going in there. And that's by design. By the way, it's a, I'm not, I don't think I'm good enough to know what's going to happen and also have a genuine reaction because mm -hmm. I think that is a tough balance. And Michael Cole has really found a balance with that. And I think Hunter, Mr. H, is also on board with it, so that helps a lot. But I think Michael Cole is saying, he's like, hey, we just need Pat to show up and just be a fan almost. Mm -hmm. like, you be a fan, you react accordingly. Now, obviously, there's some things that I'll get like a heads up, like, hey, boom and bang, need you to do, boom. It's like, okay, got it. And that's normally during like a commercial break or something that's about to happen. So they keep me out of the loop for almost everything. I almost, as soon as I, because it was rumors, there was a lot of rumors. Okay, there was, on the internet, there was Cena rumors, yeah. there was CM Punk rumors, mm -hmm. there was even Lesnar rumors, okay, and then Goldberg rumors. There was, there was so many rumors, and I obviously read the internet, okay, I'm, this is an internet show, I'm on the internet. So I see all these things, and I get some people that'll even tweet me or friends of mine that are fans that'll ask me. They're like, so who is it? Who is it? You know? And I'm like, I have no fucking idea. Like, I actually have no idea. And they think I'm bullshitting or whatever. I legitimately don't. I, whenever I heard a conversation earlier in uh. the day, I heard a conversation take place between two people and something was said. All right. And I think those might have been two of like maybe the four people that knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. they, they kept that thing real, tight real, lips. real mm -hmm. tight all day. So I overheard a conversation and I heard big guy used or something like that. Wow. Like, okay. So that could be Cena. He's a big guy. Yeah. yeah. Could be Brock Lesnar. He's, he's, he's a, a big, big guy. guy. Yeah. Could be Goldberg. He's a big guy. Too. And I was like, all right. So that kind of, I didn't think it was CM Punk. CM Punk, obviously massive name, big mm -hmm. name. But no, when you describe CM Punk, you don't say like, hey, big guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I didn't know if they were, then I started overthinking it a little bit when they said big, do they mean name big or whatever? But I, at one point yesterday was like, okay, fucking Brock Lesnar's coming out. Yeah. All right, here we, like at one point yesterday, I was like, is Brock Lesnar coming out tonight? That's going to be fucking awesome. And then if it was Brock Lesnar Roman, 
with Paul there, I actually got myself cooked into an entire corner in the bathroom. I was like, what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. What, what do Seriously. I do there? And then I just at the moment, I was like, stop. Who cares? You'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Like, who knows what's going to happen? Kind of got back into it, go out there, do the thing. And then when that thing hits, it's just amazing. It was strong. And, you know. <laughs> I didn't see him. No, no he couldn't. Well, he couldn't. That, that's what like I we were talking before. <laughs> I was I was super jealous. Obviously, I mean the, the entire weekend, like it looked like you got. I mean, it looked awesome. But like it was legit. Like, I mean, I know like same deal. I haven't been back to a full stadium in a while, and yeah, we've seen the stuff on TV. But like it really was like the energy in the oh. arena last night was like palpable. You could feel it through the TV broadcast. And then when Cena came out, like. I mean, I'd, I'd put that with, like, the top five moments of, like, in any sport in terms of people just Huge. going apeshit in there. Post-quarantine. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Post-lockdown, post-no-fans-in-the-arena, uh-huh. Thunderdome was an incredible innovation by the WWE and Vince and Kevin Dunn and mm-hmm. everybody that came up with that to, like, make it the best it could possibly be, which is what the WWE normally does with things, by the way. And then it might take a little bit, then they'll adapt, and then they do it again. It's just... That's what the WWE has done then, now, and forever. Mm-hmm. Like, that is just what the WWE does. So, And I was birthed in the Thunderdome. So I don't ever want people to anybody to think that I have any negative connotation towards the Thunderdome. Because the Thunderdome and the Capitol Wrestling Center with 20 to th- 20 fans probably in there is all I really know in that entire thing. But in front of those, you you listen to anybody in the business talk, they're like, just wait until we're in Houston. Yeah. Just wait until we're in Houston. And I'm like, this isn't bad. Like, hey, we're still having a good time here. You know, like they're like, oh, just wait till we get to Houston. Wait till we get to Houston. Then when we got to Houston, it was like, oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Okay. <laughs> and then it was like, there's no way Fort Worth, because I've been in a lot of WWE crowds and the crowds kind of, you know, it depends on the night. Like the crowd is a massive part of the show. Oh, yeah. Crowd, I, I think the crowd knows that. But then they forget some parts of the show, then they know it. I've always been very active crowd participant at WWE events. You're you're supposed to be. Like, that is what the WWE is. Like, you're supposed to be a part of the show. Roman's match with Edge last night was dictated by what was being said to him by the crowd, by what was being said and everything. Yes. Somebody called Roman a bitch. Mm-hmm. And then last night, if you heard Roman, Roman was laying on, somebody in the crowd called Roman a bitch. Roman's laying on edge, and he said, I'll make him my bitch 360, looking at the guy yeah. that said mm-hmm. it. It's like, that is what the WWE is. Like, yeah. the universe is their own character. So I've been to a bunch of different shows. And after Houston, I thought to myself, like, well, there's no way Fort Worth's going to be able to do what Houston No was. way. No way. It's not as big of an arena. There's no way they do it. And then Fort Worth (laughs) was fucking absurd. It was awesome. I mean, two for two on incredible crowds. They're in Dallas tonight, I think, for Monday Night Raw. Cena said he's going to be there. Mm -hmm. Friday, we're in Cleveland. And then there's some matches happening, I guess, down at Rolling Loud. Let's go. I mean, it is. I I think Cleveland, though, is another city where I think you're going to get some. I think it's going to be a fucking. Oh, yeah. Romp. I, I think for the foreseeable future. I think so too. We got some great shit going on. I'm I'm excited to be there, dude. What's that, Nick? You talked about the amazing electric environment in the crowd, but Pat, I need to know how much of that was pumped in through the speakers because I know the good patriots of Texas were not cheering for John China in that ring. <laughs> All right. Nice. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> you're absurd. I mean, come on. Nah, come on, Nick. Absurd. Come Jeez. on. I, there were a couple people. That were not that, happy. Well, no, no well, of course, but not that. But as soon as Roman won, there were some people so Sprinting pissed off. Out. I'm out of here. Are you fucking kidding me? No I, way. Yeah, so like, because, you know, like it, it just felt as if something. You know, It just oh, money yeah. in the bank. Mm-hmm. First pay-per-view with fans back. It felt as if some, as a fan, it felt as if, okay, there's something special going to happen. And I turned and looked after Roman won. There was people running Leaving. up the stairs. And I'm like, they're trying to beat the traffic. And I was like, oh, maybe the show is over. Like, maybe they know something I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually thought maybe they know something I don't know. And then Seth came. Mm-hmm. Seth came through the crowd. And I was like, okay, this makes sense. Now Seth Roman also. Absolutely massive. Right. So then that call that. And then Seth leaves. And then Seth comes back again, and yeah. it's like, okay, so this we are going to get this. Then Edge and Seth leave, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, wait a minute. And then Roman gets the microphone. I'm like, are we still live, or did we? is this just for the in-house or whatever? Mm-hmm. 
So I, I asked Michael, I think I asked, are we still, we're still on? He's like, yes. And I was like, okay. So I was like, <laughs> Roman's cutting a promo at the end of a pay-per-view. Okay, so now immediately, like, my fanhood starting to kick in. Yeah. Like, as, as also, I'm trying to be professional. And I can't stress this enough. I think it's a very good idea for me not to know shit. I think it is very, very, 100%. very good. And that, that... Now, obviously, there's a lot of people in that building that are mocking my schedule, you know, because I get into the building after all the meetings. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh -huh. there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions about how we're going. Because those are, those are long days, I think, for everybody else in there. We're very, I'm very, very lucky for what they're doing. But I think it has been quite a benefit for me not to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, I just think my natural reactions, calling as if, I think has been very cool. And I got Michael Cole next to me, who is able to do, can we call Michael Cole, by the way? Yeah, can we call Michael Cole? So then we got Michael Cole right next to me. So anything I do, he's going to make, he's, no matter what I do, Michael Cole's going to make it. Yeah, right. he's got it. He's the fucking best. For instance, the fluttering eyes of ah. Edge. I was, as soon as I said it, I just looked over at him to see, like, am I going to get any, he didn't even look at me. We just kept going. I didn't hear anything. I was like, all right, I guess I'll hear about that later. But, like, anything I say, he will save me. So as Roman's cutting that promo, I'm like, there's no way it's just ending with Roman saying like that. There's Damn. no way. And that whole, I mean, watching Michael Cole, okay, and it's in a wrestling business called Mark Out, basically, because mm -hmm. you're a mark, which is a, a mark is somebody, uh, you're, you're a target person, basically a fan, right? A mark is a fan of something, a stan of something called a mark. Watching him mark out to that moment in front of fans again, and watch him, watching him hit a groove almost. It was awesome. It's like you're watching fucking Bob Ross paint in mm -hmm. words. Joining us now, I have no idea where he is. Somewhere in Texas, I'd assume. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest of all time, Michael Cole. Yeah! 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 Hey, um, you know, I'm going to go through this again with you for my last appearance as well, Pat. You know, in radio, things are supposed to start on time. So when I was doing radio news... Okay. When I used to do morning drive, at the top of every hour, like not a second after it, but at the top of every hour, we would do our news report. So when you said you were going to call me at 1210 Eastern, <laughs> I'm sitting in my office by myself. <laughs> you, you realize I'm the number one trend in the world. Oh, oh, God. Oh, this guy. Oh, this God. guy. Uh, I want to let you know. Okay, just like last night, though, just like last <laughs> night and the previous time, I get so lost in the conversation that I look up at the time and I'm like, oh, shit, uh, we were supposed to do that. <laughs> so I apologize. I, I will get better at that. You're much more professional than I. But let's talk about why you were trending all night. By the way, this is the first time I've seen Michael Cole trend. And it isn't people being like, oh, Michael it's Cole, w WWE's mouthpiece, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Instead, it was everybody was so pumped about your reaction. And it was... For me to get a chance to see you in that atmosphere, in that moment, and then to, the, with Cena, it was so cool. Last night was fucking awesome, Michael Cole. Hey, it was unbelievable, Pat. It, it was one of the top five moments of my career. Uh, first, I do want to say this, is that, um, you know, you've, and I've read a lot about this online as well, but it's absolutely true. You have completely revitalized my career. Oh, man. So, I've been doing this for almost 25 years now, and I've seen... And have been a part of everything in WWE. And, um, you know, you go through different partners over the years, and everybody I've worked with has been great. And they've all uh, brought a different style uh, to the product. Um, JBL, unbelievable partner. Corey Graves, incredible talent. Um, but you're different than all those guys because you're, a, you know, not that they're not fans, but you're a true fan. And you bring that enthusiasm to the product. And seeing how you've been acting um, over the past couple of months is really revitalize what I do and I realize I have to step up my game to keep up with what you're doing from an enthusiastic standpoint and that's what I'm trying to do and it's been a lot of fun for me and it's been really different and I just want to thank you for breathing some life into this old body oh. again so maybe I can hang on for a couple more years <laughs> no 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 hey I want to let you know that was incredibly cool of you to say and uh I think as a fan for a long time I think the general thing was like okay michael cole is going to be wwe's driver okay he, he is driving everything he's answering why things that none of us truly understand are happening because that's what michael cole is 
And I think it has been an honor to kind of get a chance to, I don't want to say fuck with you, but almost like <laughs> remind you like, hey, this is hey, this is a fun thing. Like, you know, like I, I think that is something that I do on a regular basis is like, hey, let's remember that this is fun. I, I got a chance to do it in football. I've got, I, I get a chance to do this. And with you being as good, I, the only reason why I could do it in football is because I had Adam Vinatieri there in a team that was much better. The only reason why I can do what I'm doing is because I have you there. You are the biggest safety net and harness that anybody could ever have. So I think the fact that I just go out there and have a good time and the fact that you're like saying like, thank you or whatever, you don't have to do that at all. I just am honored that I get a chance to see you have a blast. Like, I think you were having a good, last night when that, when that, <laughs> hey, that was so cool. Cause you have, did you call every single one basically at John Cena's, like you and Cena, same exact kind of time so, frame, right? Well, so Pat, you know, it, it was, there was just so many emotions going through last night on so many different levels for me. I mean, it was, obviously it was an incredible weekend and starting Friday in Houston with a sellout crowd and the reaction that they gave the WWE superstars. And I mean, it popped a great rating for SmackDown and you and I had so much fun. I mean, we couldn't stop talking about it all weekend. And then, you know, last night I thought was just a step up from what happened on Friday. The fans were great in Fort Worth. It was an emotional night all around. You and I talk a lot about calling pay-per-views because we have to split with the Raw team. So it's really hard to get into a groove because you're not calling a full show, and especially since we called the first match of the night and then called the last one. And, but it was really cool though. A, Roman Reigns and Edge put on an absolute oh. master class in wrestling psychology and how to put a match together. You and I were on the edge of our seats. It was a roller coaster. It was incredible. Is Edge going to win? Is he going to pull off the miracle? Is Roman Reigns going to continue to dominate? Here come the cousins. Here come the Mysterios. Now Seth Rollins, who's got a beat, gets involved. Referee goes down. I mean, this is old school 1999 WWE. And then, of course, the moment at the end, I mean... It was a really emotional moment for me. You know, John and I have been through so much uh, in our career together. Uh, you know, we really both broke through at about the same time. Um, I was here a few years prior to John. You know, many times over the years, people have said Jim Ross had Stone Cold Steve Austin, Michael Cole had John Cena, and it's true. I believe John is the greatest of all time. I have no doubt in my mind that that man is the greatest sports entertainer because he did it longer than anyone at the level that he was at as a 16-time world champion. And to see the emotion he had, the smile on his face and the high-fiving of everyone, um, to see how excited he was to be in that atmosphere, I just reacted like a little boy again. You know, I was I was Sean Colthard, not Michael Cole, who was watching this product as a 10-year-old kid and mark it out for, you know, Hulk Hogan and, and, uh, and Bob Backlund and those guys. And that's who I was again. And the, the reaction was legitimate. And, um, you know, obviously you had the classic line of where to play off you can't see me. But it's just that I think that's why, uh, you know, you and I work, Pat. I mean, it's it's just it, it's real and nothing's rehearsed. And it's just you and I being two cool dudes hanging out. And but that Cena stuff, man, I'll tell you, I've, I've I've been in cars and buses with John Cena for a decade. And that man is the salt of the earth. Um, I've learned so much about this business from him. And to see him come back like that, it was a legitimate mark-out moment for me. I know you were talking about what a mark-out moment is moments ago, but it really was. And I don't have many of those in my career anymore, but that really was one. And as a guy who's a friend of Cena's after you said traveling the road and everything like that, watching the positive response just for yeah. all the years and years and years of just beating the shit out of his body for people. Because he used, everybody used to talk about his. Well, he beat the shit out of me, too, a number of times. So okay. let's take it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Well, there you go. Oh, jeez. Michael Cole. Yikes. <laughs> oh, great tattoo on the calf. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know we had a sweet calf tat, dude. Good for you. Um, yeah. You said greatest of all time. Fascinating. I have my opinion. So, I mean. Yeah. And I think what's going to be cool, uh, Pat, and one of the reasons I'm really excited about what's going to happen over the next five weeks leading up to SummerSlam. I mean, think about this. We're in Las Vegas, right? Um, there's going to be 45,000 people there. Uh, it's, it's in the Raiders Stadium, uh, the entertainment capital of the world with the greatest entertainment company in the world. Uh, and you've got the greatest of this time in Roman Reigns and the greatest of all time in John Cena, who are now meeting in what seems like the perfect moment. It's like the universe is aligned, right? And 
WWE fans are back. The excitement's back. Roman Reigns is the uber heel right now. He's the most dominant man, and he knows it. John Cena is coming back as the old baby face that he was. The you know you can't see me hustle loyalty and respect, and it's going to be this unbelievable meeting of these two great uh, individuals in the main event, and you and I get to be a part of that. And what's going to be cool about the lead up to this? Obviously, Reigns and Cena are going to have an unbelievable program getting to this point, but the fact that you and I get to sit there, yeah, and the fact that you and I are so adamant about who we support in this match. And, you know, we're supposed to be unbiased, right? We're journalists. I'm a Cena guy. You're a Roman Reigns guy. And I think it's going to lead to some really interesting debate and conversations over the next few weeks about can Cena win his 17th? Can he beat Ric Flair? Can John Cena cement his legacy as the greatest of all time? Will Roman Reigns slay yet another legend? Took out The Undertaker. Is he going to take out John Cena? There is just so many unbelievably rich storylines and layers to this show. Where does Paul Heyman fit into all this? The greatest talker in the history of sports entertainment against John Cena, arguably the greatest talking superstar in the history of sports entertainment. I mean, you cannot write a better scenario. I am so psyched to be able to sit down and call this with you starting Friday night. All right. Listen, the promos are going to be epic. Okay, the promise will be. But Roman's on another level right now. Okay, this is. Hey, hey, listen. Hey, Jacob Toretto. All right, before Jacob Toretto was even born. Uh All right, that's when John Cena was doing his thing, dominant. He has no idea what this Roman is right now. I'm like, I don't even think you know. I mean, you call these matches, you don't even get a chance to take it in. You're talking about the guy right now. You know how much lust I saw in the eyes of the ladies of Texas when Roman walked out there and their husbands and boyfriends were booing this man that could beat up their entire family if he wanted to? This is the guy. Hey, hey, hate to break it to you, Cena. All right, last night was awesome. It was an honor to be a part of it. It was amazing. Happy that I got a chance to be a part of that. Honor to be a part of that. But just like Edge, I mean, Edge signed up for the Roman thing. It's dead. Sorry. <laughs> okay, John Cena signed up for the Roman. This is just not a good time. Hey, you said it's perfect time. As a fan of John Cena, I think it's a bad time uh-huh. to be John Cena if he's going after Roman Reigns. And that's just my thoughts personally. I agree with you on that point because, you know, Roman's in his prime. And I don't remember a more dominant individual at this stage of his career than Roman Reigns has been. I mean, he's held the title for almost a year. He has knocked off every single competitor. And you can talk about Seth Rollins getting involved and helping him win last night or whatever the case may be. He didn't ask him. The bottom line is is he's dominant. Roman believes in himself. Um, And he, like you said, is on a completely – he's on another level right now. But you can't count Cena out. This guy has accomplished that in his career. Seriously. He's a 16-time world champion. Your buddy, the Nate. Who, Woo! by the way, invited you for beers, which is great. Um, he did. Nate, That's cool. 16-time world champion. Cena has an opportunity to break that record at SummerSlam. And if you don't think John is focused, he came back at the right time in between movies. He's a big movie star now. Box office draw. Not wrestling every week. Roman has the advantage there. But there's that intangible factor that John Cena is going to bring to the table. And JBL coined John Cena this about a decade ago. Big match, John. Yeah. Well, big match, John, was roaming around, you know, Ferdinand uh, before Roman's yard happened. Okay. Uh Roman's yard is one that nobody really just walks through. Now, that bull Ferdinand would have walked in there Mm -hmm, and Roman would have said, welcome back, Ferdinand, worldwide box office superstar, Guten Tag, Ola, Bonjour, Nihau, John Cena, right to the mouth. That's what Roman. Gotcha. Hey, listen, I'm a big fan of John Cena. Okay? Big, big fan of John Cena. I just, I hate that it has to be. I hate what's going to have to happen a big match, John, from Roman Reigns Bummer. because it's just it's going to be tough. Well, what I can tell you is this: is Friday night is going to be epic. I mean, we're in Cleveland for SmackDown. Uh, Cena and Reigns, you know, most likely will have their first confrontation, uh, real confrontation. And let's not forget, Pat, that I'm going to be in my wheelhouse Friday night because not only are we in Cleveland, but we are also going to be broadcasting from Rolling Loud. Ooh. in Miami by the way which I finally found out yesterday what Rolly Loud actually is yeah, yeah. Um, and, let's talk about um, dope oh, 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 okay. you know what I mean Rolling Loud 
I cannot wait to be to, to be a part of that. Seriously, it's going to be it's a pretty cool event, man. We've never partnered with a Rolling Loud like we're going to this week. We've got a number of matches set uh, for Miami uh, that'll be you know broadcast during the show. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, I think people are going to learn a lot about me and my hip hop culture. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that back in the day when I was part of the Green Machine Ten Speed Gang and I had the boombox on my shoulder listening to the Sugar Hill Gang. <laughs> There you go. I said a hip, hop, a hip, a hip, a hip, a hip, a hip, 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 Cole, Pat sent us a uh, video last night of when you guys left the arena and you, you came out to basically like a curtain call and a standing O and people chant your name. Is that very common or is that like one? I mean, how many other times can you remember something like that happening after an oh, event? Uh, never. I mean, usually I walk out of the building and like, you're a piece of shit. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> Go home. Um, you know, you look like an idiot. Uh, no, but actually yesterday was pretty epic. I mean, people were cheering for me. Um, you know, I got some really good support online. Uh, Listen, it's been a long haul, uh, and anytime I can get some positive press, I, I, I like it. But <laughs> at, at the end of the day, listen, I've busted my ass for 25 years in this business, and um, nobody can ever take that away from me. I'm, I, you know, I may not be the greatest of all time. Uh, I honestly and will truly say that I think when it comes to emotion, Jim Ross is the greatest ever in this business. Um, I think I'm the greatest ever when it comes to running a show, uh, running traffic. Um, but no matter what you think about me, um, listen, that's your opinion. That's the beauty of this business. It's the beauty of wrestling. You can love people. You can hate people. But you're never going to be able to take away the fact that I've worked at this for 25 years. Yes. I, on I've the road. On I've the road. Every. And I've literally missed two television shows in 25 years. And to me, that's, you know, that's a badge of honor. And um, it's pretty cool. And as you're understanding, Pat, and you've only been doing this a couple of months, it's a grind. And... Um, Hey, you know, it, it is what it is, but I love it, and I love what I do, and um, I love working next to you. And I do want to say one thing, that your uh, team, the guys I met this weekend, of course, you know, uh, everybody there, absolutely class act. You have got the best team um, to support you uh, on the entire planet. You're an incredibly talented guy, man. You are. Your show is unbelievable, but that crew that you have around you is, are absolute saints. I mean, they are you can't ask for better people. They are they are so respectful. I cannot tell you the amount of people that I spoke to this weekend uh, about about you and your crew and how you respect the business and um, you everyone you talk to you're polite to. There's no ego, uh, none of that. And you know I just want to give you a thumbs up for that because the more I get to know you and your team, man, it's it's pretty freaking incredible. And you guys should be proud of what you've done. The Bugle Boys, huh? Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey way to go, Good Barry. pander, nice. Cole. Good pander. Hey, I was smart, by the way, to keep Connor on your side. Yeah, yeah. Con this is Connor's <laughs> first weekend, I think, really, at oh, the yeah. WWE. Ever really. He had a question for you, then we'll let you go. We appreciate your time here. And thank you for those kind words, by the way. We are very yeah. thankful for the opportunity you guys allow us. And also, the boys, you guys are a pretty fucking cool group, people. Oh, man, I thanks. Mean, you no, you're cool. Yeah, 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 you're good good for the ride. Yeah, you're a good guy, guy yeah. you know. Right. Cool train. Uh, not to be lost in the weekend, because obviously, yesterday, it was unbelievable, but Pat cut a promo on uh, Friday in Houston. I don't know oh, if you, you knew. can't let this go, can you? Hey, you no, 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 no. I don't know if you knew what he was going to say. What, was like, what were you feeling? No, it was pretty cool, guys. Uh, you know, Pat does this thing now during the commercial breaks of SmackDown called the McAfee uh, Minute, yes. and um, who knows what he's going to do. And he got up dressed as Gene Autry. Um, all your old guy, all your old school people know that. But that guy died in 1998. He called me that, that on TV or something. <laughs> <shit. laughs> yeah, and he said you didn't know who that is. The guy's dead. 1998. Great guy. Great Western outfits he had. But Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, but check it out online. Pat just basically buried me to Houston and told everyone that I left the city because it stinks and, and everything else. But it was classic, Pat. I'm looking forward to doing more of that stuff with Pat um, over the over the years and. And with you guys as well. And remember, you guys still owe me uh, a ride on the coal train. Um, yeah, all right. If it ever comes to the <laughs> Yeah, right. You're always bouncing out yeah. of town. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Cole. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Michael Cole. Yeah. See you, man. Thank you. 25 years missed two shows. That's yeah. unbelievable. Wow. And he was driving. <laughs> and layovers. Shit. Yeah. Commercial layovers, flying coach all the way up until I think a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, you can... You can hate him, which people did for a long time. There were some eras there where it was 
hard to like Michael Cole because sure. he, he had to put over some stuff that was happening where it was like, all right, come dude, on, come Mike. on. Yeah, this guy's got no brain if he yeah. thinks we're going to believe that. But that was like that was like his job, you know. It's a sh it's entertainment. Like that mm -hmm. was his whole thing. But that guy just works his dick. He's loved, loved backstage by people too. It's you don't you don't last. I think around there for twenty five. That place is like a family over there. Mm -hmm. Foxy has missed now Hell in a Cell, and then he also missed this particular weekend yeah, because I was just gonna say. he had amazing things going on, and he is walking back into I think a oh, little yeah. bit of a. Uh, I had a wedding to go to Saturday. I already missed two shows. Michael Cole's been doing this twenty five years. Has only missed two shows in his whole career. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and he realized that you've already missed. Don't two I know. <laughs> he I got, got a text message. <laughs> I got a text. I'm, I'm ready for it. Actually, it's gonna be hilarious. Uh, it was awesome. All right, there's a lot of stuff that happened in uh, the sports world as well that we have to cover. I mean, friend of the show, Colin Morikawa, puts on a clinic Hell yeah. in Woo. Sandwich, England. I mean, just dialed in, locked in, focused, had no idea the moment because the moment is only going to get bigger and bigger for Colin Morikawa as he continues to grow. Two-time major champion before the age of 25, leader in earnings. His iron play is flawless. Yeah. And he's got absolute crushed Ice cubes flowing through that incredibly handsome body. Yes. Uh -huh. He's he's a he he's a very fit fella. Oh yeah. S small guy. Small guy. Mm -hmm. For sure. Shirt was like baggy and he looked small in there. And then he steps up over those putts that he needed and it was just absolute rock Iron steady. Yeah. Yeah. Locked in. He had uh, he was in the rough, I think, real close, and he could blade that chug chunk that whatever flops it up to like eight feet and then buries the putt it's like this guy does he even know what the fuck is going on right now it was amazing yeah the tournament basically came down to that shot i think it was on like 15 and yes. they were saying how tough it was and like hey if he if he you know screws this up like he's it's gonna over. end up doubling this hole and probably losing the tournament fucking flops it up into you know six feet and then knocks in the par it, it was incredible guys a savage we'll talk about that and everything else going on in the world is it bucks and six? Oh, mm. whoa. We thought the Suns were going to win that thing. Yeah. yeah. Is it bucks and six? Giannis is blocking people, six. dunking uh -huh. on people, living, mm -hmm. giving great inspirational qu quotes about ego, pride, humility. Mm -hmm. Is it bucks and six? I don't Buck, know. 18334 McAfee, a lot of your phone calls as well. AJ Hawk, who did an incredible job hosting from the studio on Friday, will join us here in a bit. I'm not sure we have any guests locking. Got home like 3 a.m. Late night. Didn't get a chance <laughs> to text anybody. We'll figure it out as the show goes. Maybe surprise guests in hour two or hour three. Okay. Michael Cole, we confirmed that two minutes as we're going <laughs> yeah. on. Hey, can I call you in like 10 minutes? Yeah, you got it. So play it by ear, plus your phone calls. It's a beautiful day to have a great day. We'll see you in four. Walks all the way up. Oh! oh sleep! Oh, sleep! Holy oh, shit!
slip. This is not the one that I saw. Oh, good. Oh, my God. Can we go back to the beginning, please? Listen, go back to the Jesus. beginning. This guy, pause, 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 pause. That guy was sitting one section over in this blue polo shirt wearing son of a bitch who's here with his friend by the way right here they're just having a good old day at the ballpark old buddy in the glasses back here oh this has been fun look at this guy up here with the and the wife is maybe the, the wife and the guy up there they, they're kind of intrigued to see what's going on padres guy said hey listen i've been locked in my fucking house for 13 months i'm gonna come to a ball game and you're gonna say dumb shit i don't think so pal he walks over what 45 yards, yeah. casually, eyes ready to go, not fists ready to go, though. Just that side, no, calm. What, you, you got a fucking problem, pal? People smiling down here. They know something's about to happen. We got a camera out. We would like to see the alternate angle from this particular person. But what a moment here. We beat COVID. We are back. Old buddy here needs to watch out for right hooks. Bow! Buckled. What, bitch? He said, <laughs> what? And then he gets wow. tackled by everybody else. Back pedals. Everybody watches this happen. What a mo- Jeez. What? He says. What, dude? What? What? Damn. Oh, my. What was said by who? Hey, as we get back into society, let's remember. People will punch you in the fucking mouth. Yeah. Uh-huh. show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back, beautiful people. Got a chance to chat more about the weekend. Also chatted about Peacock. So this happened with ESPN Plus with UFC for a couple of events where they couldn't handle... I believe the volume, is that what it is? The platform couldn't handle the volume. Last night, Peacock, I guess, did have outages and drops and freezes and everything like that. That's going to have to get figured out because we had a hell of a show. Yeah. yeah. One of the better parts of it, too, is where it froze on where uh, Riddle and Boogs had a nice little back and forth. They had a great back and yeah. forth. Yeah. I mean, there was a... So we didn't get to call, like he said, about how pay-per-view, we don't call... Uh, like half the matches mm-hmm. or whatever. We had the first two matches and then the last match. So for an hour and a half, two hours, we were just in the back. I guess in the room, because in the arenas, there, there's rooms, you know, so you kind of like just go hang out in a room and then you go to your thing, locker rooms or whatever production, like where you just hang out in a room and then you go back out there. We were in a room that we were on our phones, so we knew it was happening. Yeah. While everybody else was in the show, didn't know it was happening, right? Because you're currently in the moment, you can't mm-hmm. worry about that. So... Uh, there will have to be some sort of statement that will have to come. I mean, that's, you can't have that, especially. I mean, we were there, so we got to see the whole thing live. Luckily. I think if I was at home and I missed it, I would have been much more vocal, but I got to see it live. I was very lucky. I did acknowledge it, though. I felt like I had to. Mm-hmm. I, if I didn't acknowledge it, you know what I mean? Like, I, oh, wait, nobody can take me serious ever again if I don't yeah. acknowledge it. Yeah. But that has to get figured out, especially if we got Roman, the Roman. greatest of all time, against yeah. Cena, the greatest of his generation. Well, and I think, you know, with the ESPN one with the UFC, like it was basically like two fuck ups. And then they were like, all right, we can't keep doing this because we're just taking it on the shin. So maybe we'll upgrade this. I think this has been kind of the second time on Peacock where they've had issues. So I'm assuming. So let's give them a little bit of. That's the first one with fans, though. So it's probably True. much larger. True. So, so let's assume that this was their first one trying to handle the bandwidth since the entire thing happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe. I would assume it will be fixed by the next pay per view for sure. It would have to be, right? You would think. It better be. I mean, you it would, would have think. to be. I mean, can you imagine if it would have went off before Cena got out there last <laughs> night? I mean, it would have been hell. So, what are they? People okay. just have to go back and watch it all the way through now, today on Peacock, if they want to see the entire thing? Because I think it was, it was the men's money in the bank at the beginning, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> Did you that? guys get to see Ricochet? Uh, we saw the the spot. They, they, they there got wasn't a fix, one. Like, just there... in time. We saw one spot yeah. where was he... Was it the big flip one? It was the flip off the top where he landed on the top rope, then somersaulted to the outside of the ring. Did you guys see him get to the ladder? Uh-uh. Oh, oh, man. It was wild. Oh, oh, wait. Was that the walk across the top? Yeah, yeah we did see that. Okay. Whole, I mean, yeah. there was an entire... There was some other... I mean, that match had some absurd things happening. Oh, yeah. People. Just absurd. Big E winning, though. Congrats. Yeah, Smack yeah. that yeah. Baby, Big E. Uh, let's get some phone calls here. one 833 4 McAfee before we get an hour two. Uh, well, we do have to address something. What's that? So we had been chatting about the rumors of what goes on down there at Olympic Village. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's right. Everybody's saying everybody's boning everybody, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Pontown. Yeah, everybody's saying it's Pontown. Olympic Village's nickname is Pontown. We were just in Cowtown, yep. the actual nickname of Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, it's yeah. on the sign. So when I said that Cowtown. five times last night, it was not a joke. That is actually what the town... <laughs> it is Cowtown. For real. It is the epicenter of the Texas Longhorn trading... Air. It's the cow trading capital, I think, of the world. Mm-hmm. Cowtown. Cowtown. That's what I was saying. This particular place, that is literally what they're absolutely known for, is just everybody boning it. Yeah, that's Pond right. Pond. Olympic Village is known for housing the greatest athletes on earth over their month long stay in whatever country that has either paid or earned their way into hosting the Olympics. And then what's going on in there is their bed bouncing and they're just going to town on each other. Mm -hmm. That's the rumors. That is 100 percent the rumors. Right. I've never I've never been an Olympian. Okay, I have no idea. I don't think there's ever been a reality show of all the boning in there. We have no idea. We're just telling you what the rumors are of Olympic Village that we have been told, and I think the world has been told. Right. This year with COVID, Tokyo goes on from like one stage of danger, uh, COVID level, then bounces it up to another. There's no fans. Allegedly, there was an early narrative that Tokyo didn't want to be an international bone and COVID spread in operation in Olympic Village. Mm -hmm. So they actually allegedly created beds out of cardboard oh, so geez. there'd be nobody tempted to potentially fornicate with each other and not just maybe make Olympic babies. Ooh. Not just potentially have a fantastic time of love with somebody <laughs> you've never met before. No, no, no. But also, you know, to potentially pass the time. <laughs> The Olympic Village said, not this year. Don't need you passing COVID on our watch. Stay in your rooms. Don't talk to anybody. S live in your little cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, our Olympic Village is, uh, is filled with cardboard boxes. That's what these athletes are living on because they don't want anybody boning. That was the narrative that was painted. Shout out to who tweeted that. Let's give them actual credit there. Uh, they put, took a picture. I believe this was an athlete from somewhere. Paul Cellino. Cellino. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Fast forward to the Irish guy. Okay. Guy named Rise says, hey, fake news out there. Whoa, yeah. whoa. They do not want us not boning. It seems like they're actually just <laughs> maybe potentially saving some money. Run the clip from Rice McClanahan. This episode of fake news at the Olympic Games. The beds are meant to be anti-sex. They're made out of cardboard, yes, but apparently they're meant to be <laughs> We can. Okay. Wow. He just Hell said, yeah. yeah. I don't know fake, what type of Olympic. Fake news. Fake news. I don't <laughs> I don't know what type of Olympic <laughs> fornicating's going on, but he said, I don't know what you're into, but if you need it, we got it. Mm -hmm. He was doing springboard base jumps off of that thing. So that was uh, that was our update from the Olympics that began on Friday. Are yeah. you kidding me? They're making fucking beds for the Olympians out of cardboard? Well, it looked comfy. I mean, I see that it it's, bounces, but there's no way it's comfortable. It's a lot better in my eyes that the fastest woman on earth wasn't allowed to go so she doesn't have to sleep in a cardboard box. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean. All right. <laughs> Carrie Richardson deserves to be in the fucking Olympics, okay? They're yeah. never going to change those rules. That's reality. We can, we're a lot of bitch about it. But now that I know that Shakari isn't sleeping in cardboard boxes in Tokyo, I'm much better with it. feel her. good for I, her. I'm much better with yeah. her. I don't know what she's going to do. Hopefully she's never sleeping in cardboard boxes. They don't pay these athletes, and they're sleeping in cardboard boxes. What the hell's going on with the Olympics? Can't we can kiss Team USA's chances of winning gold goodbye when it comes to basketball. Because I'll tell you what, the guys playing in the finals right now aren't going over to Tokyo and sleeping on cardboard after seeing that. How many more boxes are needed for the uh, the basketball oh, players? God. Probably two of them. Uh, you're not going to be able to just have a four box operation when uh -huh. some of these six foot 11 guys walk in there with a sick jumper you're gonna need at least two to three more boxes flattened out and folded i saw 
I saw this guy, homeless guy down there in Texas. Oh, that's right. He had this. He had this cardboard box paradise down there. Mm -hmm. It was a cardboard box castle. And yeah. I, oh. I don't know how it survived, okay, because of how hot it is. You would think with cardboard with the amount of heat. This guy might have been the greatest architect in the history of bumps. Mm -hmm. I think this guy was wasted in, I don't know what he got into. I'm talking about his ability, though. He built up this cardboard castle almost underneath this bridge. He was wearing, uh, like, medical outfit like he, he was Scrubs? a patient in the yeah. hospital with one leg cut off nice. okay above mm -hmm. the knee he knew good fashion other leg all the way down deep v deep v yeah, yeah. it was a deep v deep. and he had socks on and he was i don't know if he was putting the finishing touches on that's what i called it but he was putting up the wall maybe the last wall this guy had an incredible spread two stories uh i think he had shelves yeah Oh, so okay. he had shelves in there, but it wasn't like a two-story. And I think he was maybe running a little bit of an operation. Sure, down a there general too. store almost. Yeah, I think so. It was under this bridge. It was a pretty cool little thing. But obviously, we gave every dollar we had to him. Yeah. So congrats on the great work. We wish you could help more. But we're not really a paper operation. We're more of a card operation. If mm -hmm. you could start, hey, if you get a square in here yeah. or maybe some Apple Pay, mm -hmm. we'd be able to help you out, maybe add on to this cardboard thing. But anyways, that thing, very impressive with cardboard. I wonder if he's the one that designed the bum in, uh, I wonder if that bum in Houston was the one that designed all the Olympic Village beds. Well, that doesn't sound like it because then we'd have, you know, these extravagant, opulent, you know, dual deal? decker Sleeping beds. Sleeping on cardboard boxes? Can't do it. Can't do it. I mean, these are fucking Olympians. I, it, I understand it probably works and it's sturdy and it cheap. doesn't, it, you put a bed on there, but it, you know, this is the Olympics. Yeah. These are the world's best athletes. Can we not get a sponsor to get us maybe some plastic in there? Yeah. What are they sleeping on cardboard? Hey, maybe we're wrong. Maybe cardboard is the better of the future. No, maybe no, no, we're no. judging. I we're not wrong. So. Yeah, maybe we're judging uh, this wrong. We're not. I don't think you should be able to host the Olympics if you're not going to sell out and give these guys real beds and, or, and girls real beds and goddamn bed frames. I well, mean, give me a break. What if they were saying, we don't want anybody buying it here, so we're making you a weak-ass bed so you can't. You can barely sleep on it. All right, we don't need two people potentially fake sleeping on it, rolling around. like You know what I mean? We don't need that happening, so we're going to need you. I understand if that's literally what it was. But Rice McClenahan says that ain't that ain't what they did. Yeah, right. they're actually inviting it. They said, "Hey, we'll put a little cardboard uh, luxury exclusivity up on the sides, mm -hmm. or maybe cut a window in there if you want to see your neighbor or whatever." <laughs> I mean, it is. What the fuck is going on with the Olympics? Well, right? now I saw someone from the uh, U.S. gymnastics team tested positive. They haven't said who it is. It's I'm, not. It better not. If well, it is no, Simone what, Biles, that, you delay the Olympics until she it. is no longer tested positive. You just positive. cancel it. If Simone cannot compete, there is no reason to hold the Olympics. I don't think it's her, though, because I'm pretty sure they would have said that. So I think they kind of just no. be like, hey, if it, ain't, when, if when, it ain't Simone, you sweep that under the rug. Get her the fuck out yeah. of here. Wouldn't they say it's not Simone, though? Uh, well, with the USA uh -huh. gymnastics team, who knows what they would say and what they wouldn't say. Hey, speaking of that, there's another article coming out here uh -huh. about the FBI in Indianapolis. Uh, yeah. Allegedly getting all the reports about Michigan State's Larry Nasser mm -hmm. and everything he was doing with the United States gymnastics. And the head of the FBI now, uh, something Horowitz, I forget his first name, he wrote an entire review of the FBI Indianapolis, uh, whatever, handling, field office. field office handling of it. Can't trust anything. Yeah, they, nope. No. Ugh, not good. Can't trust anything with anything. Mm -mm. The more we learn, the less we understand. The more the web grows. What's that? Well, I mean, the web does grow. Always. I mean, shit, the thing you sent me this morning, people are just finding out now. And what now was it about? It's about, uh. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's everywhere. Hey, that was a big deal. <laughs> Have you seen the entire Ghislaine doc? No, not yet. Oh, they were trending God. again this morning, the people that were allegedly involved with uh, Ghislaine and Epstein. They were trending on Twitter. A couple of big time names. No, no, no. I'm talking about the uh, potential. Yeah. Uh, Pump, the pumping uh, masters. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Hour one's wrapping up. <laughs> AJ Hawks on the other side. Plus your phone calls, 1-833-4-MCAFEE. Don't hang up on these people. We'll answer them on the other side with AJ Hawk. You got about six minutes. I hope you're having a great Monday, dude. What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, i never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. 
It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? <laughs> So when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make. <laughs> I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did and, you start uh, you self-cheersing? Know, when did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember, and it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. I say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. No, oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. This is Remember the Titans. How's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. I do a lot of things. Today, I am a professional analyst getting ready for the Thursday night football opener in beautiful Nippert Stadium with the Cincinnati Bearcats here at higher ground. This secluded world. Good squad, good place, excited for this morning practice. I'm obviously unbiased, but I'm pulling hard for Cincinnati to do well on Thursday night. I like to say, all these clipboard quarterbacks. <laughs> oh. This has been so cool to see. Whenever we were driving out here into the sticks, uh, my boys and I from Indianapolis, we were told by Coach Fickle it was a 40 minute drive from where we live. Absolute lie, hour and a half out here. Uh, but as we were getting out here, we didn't know what we were gonna show up to. And this is such a cool scene here. I remember whenever I was in college, we won a lot of games, beat Cincinnati a couple times. It was a great day. But I remember my boys, right? Like I still am in touch with them every single day, every single week. We had this moment where we went from boys to become men. And you guys were a really young team last year, but to got to experience a lot of wins. Like now the expectation level are high. And I can't wait to talk you all up on Thursday night against UCLA. UCLA refused to respond to my tweet. So I am a Bearcat fan on that opening night, and I cannot wait to watch you guys dominate. And uh, 
I think this is such a cool thing. Coach, I can't thank you enough for your hospitality. I got a bunch of swag from you guys, too. This has been a cool day. Enjoy this, though. This doesn't happen a lot. Even when you get into the NFL, it's not like college. It's not like your boys. It's not like this. It's a whole different world that you'll remember forever. And I was honored to be here to watch you today. And I can't wait to watch you guys go win the thing on Thursday night and then throughout the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Cheers, boys. Thank you. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show, Hour 2, Monday, July 19th, 2021, with the Hammered Down Boys in studio. We'll begin, all right, now, Woo! not only the Hammered Down Boys here, great to see you guys. What's up, boys? How you doing, boys? Good, you? Hey, not too shabby. Thank you for asking. Joining us from an attic in Ohio, college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, and an incredibly well-dressed and great host of this show on Friday, live from the studio, AJ Hawk. Yeah! Yeah! What's this shit? What's up, man? Yeah, I'm not in. I'm not in studio. I, I got to dress down when I'm at home. That's only for. That's for Indy. I want to let everybody know I love the Centerville Elks. Okay, I put on for the Centerville Elks. Long. Long before I knew AJ Hawk, okay. high school out there. I love that shirt. I, I think I might even have the same shirt, even, and I didn't even play for the Centerville Elks. I won't let you know that. But this is despicable in comparison to what you wore on Friday. Okay, and what's that all about? Just because you were in Stu, you thought the studio deserved a shirt and tie? Yeah, I want to respect the seat, man. I want to respect the show. So when I when I come kinda. to town, yeah, I feel like well, I need to dress up a bit. Well, I think you kind of disrespected, don't you think? Yeah. Why? How was that disrespected? You became a suit. No, I'm, say, I'm saying, hey, like this show, this is a very, it's a great opportunity for me. I get to host this big oh. show. I'm going to give it kind of, I'm going to let people know, like, I'm taking this serious. This is a, I'm, it's a big responsibility sitting in that seat. Well, you did great. I want to <laughs> let you know you did an incredible job, you and I thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thank you. Good job, AJ. You did an incredible job. A couple of people tweeted and said it was the best show that we've ever had. I blocked those people. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. I did. Yeah. And, I, and I agree with them, too, by the way. I listen, but. I don't need that in my life. Nope. All right. I fucking I, I try to talk every single day and be entertaining. Say it's the best show, the one that I'm not on. It's my name. Fuck you. Block you. You don't win any of the prizes I give away. <laughs> See ya. Okay. That's what I just want to let. But I can understand the sentiment because I actually listened to the show after we got kicked out of the hotel. You ran a good show, AJ. Great show, man. The boys were electrifying. You guys, it was a great Friday. And I thank you so much for driving over here and doing that. Thank you. Hey, I had fun. The boys obviously are a gigantic help for me. Everybody that was there in studio, so it was uh, it was fun. It was fun to have you and Connor on for the first hour too. I know Connor Connor got a lot of good pub from uh, his hour and his facial expressions, his hair, everything about just everything that makes Connor about? who he is. Yeah. Are what was it? What are you trying to Clown. say? He's huh? stooge in a class. <laughs> <laughs> we watched that clip. Somebody tweeted us that clip because we were yeah. we got kicked out. Okay, we got kicked out of the hotel. Like, yeah. It was unbelievable. Wow. This, this is not a hotel that we booked, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that I would do it differently. WWE booked a hotel in Houston, and we got an Airbnb in Fort Worth or whatever. And I normally get an Airbnb so I can get a balcony. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. hey, if there's a hotel, I need a balcony need for kind of what AJ just did there yeah. uh -huh. in his sure. thing. But I just need a balcony, all right? I need yeah. to be able to get out into the open air for how my brain operates in the way I need to fall asleep, you know? It's not great getting into an elevator, going down 19 floors, going all the way outside <laughs> yeah. into an alley because it might not be there, and then going all the way back. It's hard to get tired and fall asleep <laughs> when you have to do it. So I need a balcony, all right? But in Houston, yeah. we couldn't find anything. We get a hotel, and there was no late checkout. We called in the morning. I was like, ah, can I get a late checkout to one because i was like i could at least do an hour and a half two hours mm, here yeah. they're like nope sorry place is sold out too and i was like are you kidding me they're like early check-ins coming for your room i'm like there's <laughs> seven thousand rooms in this hotel. come on they're like can't help you basically literally so we as we're walking out the person the cleaning lady is like almost jamming in the door so we're listening to the show 
Fucking great show, dude. I thought you were potentially going to maybe drop some news. Speaking of, since then, there, a lot has happened. AJ, big news out of Green Bay, Wisconsin this mm -hmm. weekend, and I'm happy you are here to talk about this. And I'm not sure if you did chatter about this on Friday before the news was broke on Facebook, I believe. A deep clean service uh -oh. was ordered to Aaron Rodgers' Haas in Green Bay, Wisconsin, says Lace Marie. She says, my girlfriend is a supervisor in Brown County who works for the home cleaning service. Guess whose house was on for a deep clean early next week? They've cleaned his house for 10 plus years. Ooh. Aaron freaking Rogers. Lace would go on to say, many players and coach personnel are getting their homes deep cleaned as they are returning after two months to six months of not being in Green Bay. Love this. Optimism grew throughout Green Bay and the Packers mm -hmm. faithful. Aaron's cleaning the house for a big season. My immediate thoughts is I saw all of Green Bay Packers fans get excited. I was like, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, ha I'm hoping he goes back to Green Bay. Love what he did. Hope they get it figured out. What if he's cleaning that thing to sell it? Oh, Boom. no. That's oh, no. a possibility. Has anybody, oh, no. has, anybody, has Lace Marie thought about that? Uh uh, certainly not. Has Lace Marie thought, oh, gonna sell this thing dirty? No, no, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And what if he's not so what if he's just cleaning and it's like his uh, country club membership that's just yeah. sent on, hey, need you to do it this time. But every little thing that happens like that, Green Bay Packers fans are like, he's back. Okay. Go. Okay. He's back. Have you heard about the cleaning service? What does this mean? And what is some breaking news you have about this cowboy right here? Well, this is the uh, it's the first I'm hearing of the cleaning service news. It's pretty amazing how many steps removed someone can put this together. And, and uh, if you look at it and you believe it, like, oh yeah, hey, maybe. Maybe this is a really good sign for him coming back to Green Bay. But I instantly was going to say, well, yeah, what if he's putting it on the market? Like if, he, <laughs> if, if we hear the house is for sale three days from now, then then what? Your emotions shift a little bit, I guess. That, I saw the entire Internet get excited. I saw Green Bay Packers mm -hmm. fans in Faithful get excited from Lace Marie's post there. Because mm -hmm. the narrative she painted it with, everybody was like, oh, that's got to be it. And as soon as reading it, I was like... Uh, well, I don't know if this is great news. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if this is great news for Packers fans. And that is because we're all so invested in this. The NFL's MVP this is a guy who's on our show every week. Mm -hmm. We're two weeks off from training camp. There's three teams starting training camp yep. this week. Yeah, yeah. And we still have no idea. Let's hope and assume that that thing will come uh, into a little bit clearer picture. The Buccaneers, the Cowboys, and Steelers are the three NFL teams reporting to training camp this week. Shout out to Field Yates on that tweet. We're getting very close. Uh, the Buccaneers, is that because they have the first game against Dallas? Steelers don't have a new coach. How come they're allowed Steelers to? Steelers and Cowboys oh, play four preseason games. They play in the preseason game uh, this year, which is a week the Hall of Fame game? The Hall of Fame game. Or, yeah, the Hall of Fame game. That game. <laughs> we had the last year I played. Great. We had the Hall of Fame game, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, I believe. Wow. Jeez. Triple crown. How does that work? I was like, what? God. Well, I was thinking about it, but <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now I'm doing I'm, it. I'm, we're here longer. <laughs> yeah. We're here on every worst day. I mean, it's awesome. But those that longer training camp for a game that oh. means the Hall of Fame game, yeah. Shit. All the other stuff. Hey, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all of that, that's fine. You can handle that. But the, the Hall of Fame game is the first thing everyone checks. Like, hey, we're not in that game next year, are we? I'm sorry. Hall of Fame game, London, Thanksgiving. Oh, geez. Christmas. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, here. yeah, you looked at all the thing. It's like, all right, so we're a week and a half earlier than everybody else, basically, to training camp. We got to do this whole thing. I was like, we're. it's like whenever uh, you get your class schedule in high school. And you like see where your homeroom is, mm -hmm. and then you see what classes mm -hmm. you guys are like. Ah, I got seven. Well, stinks. Come on. <laughs> no study off. Of, we're not even going to Denver. Can we get at least one treat? <laughs> Can we get one in there? It's uh, that Hall of Fame game. They need to scrap that. You think? I mean, well, they can't because they're always gonna. There's, they're going to be introducing the next class every year, so they just won't have a game, you think? Yeah, just make it an event, like a concert, yeah. uh, a thing. Yeah. The game is not the, – the players aren't even playing it. Like, Aaron wasn't going to play in that game that got canceled the one we were in. There's no way Aaron was going to do it. it, it oh. There's just – it's just, why are we, I guess because you're putting on for the team, and I understand, I was lucky to be there, Tony went in, everybody goes, I get it, this year, there's a lot of Colts going in there, it's huge, but that game is just a complete, I mean, it's a waste almost, it is a complete, the players who are going to play are probably not playing in that game, mm -hmm. so I guess it's good football, but once you get, what, three plays into that game, everybody's like, alright, this ain't a fucking game. Yeah. When's the, uh, when's the game? I at? think it started in 2002, and I'm pretty sure the Hall of Fame was around before that and survived without it, so I think they can do it without the game. 
Yeah, can, can we have like a quiet, uh, uh, a quiet, a quiet, <laughs> quite a spectacle? Could you not make that on Thursday? You can make Hall of Fame weekend a full spectacle without having to trot out. Yeah. Basically, like the replacements. does it get good ratings though? Because it's the first preseason game, do they get pretty big ratings? I'm guessing. Yeah, and it would get good ratings for regardless of what they did yeah. there. You know, like whatever they did there, it would still get good, don't you think? I don't know. I mean, if it if you don't have a game, I think when it's it's like the first football people get to see of the year, I think people are kind of excited, even though it may right. only be for the first quarter. All right. I, and by the way, I can buy into that because any football game is going to outrate anything else. So maybe you tie in football somehow. Well, right? isn't it? It's at a high school stadium, right? You could just get like the number one and number two high school teams in like the nation or something and have them play each other. And then the NFL guys don't have to deal with it. And it'd still be, you know, a lot of those guys are going to go play big time college football. Hey, did you play high school football there when you were in high school? Uh, not there, not at Canton, but uh, I mean that's a, a great spot. High school teams could do that, but they start camp basically when that game happens. So make them go to camp yeah, earlier. They're young. Fuck them. <laughs> Send them July first and get them ready for that Hall of Fame game, and then they'll have a four week break before their first regular season. Hey, they're on national TV playing in a Hall of Fame game. They get yeah. to play. They don't have to play. Uh -huh. They get to play those high schoolers, and especially with his name, image, likeness. Do you know how many juju beats? Oh, that's right. Juju yeah. dance you can TikToks. do in the Hall of Fame. That's Come right. on. <laughs> What I'm saying is, as a player on a team that had to play the Hall of Fame game, that inevitably got canceled because they uh, painted it, uh, the field, and then put a tarp over top <laughs> of it, which acted like a magnifying glass to the paint, which then melt on the entire turf, which made it a basic just sticky surface nobody mm -hmm. could run. Perfect. So the game inevitably got canceled anyways, and we had to make a tunnel for the Hall of Famers to walk down and... That's sweet. They should just <laughs> broadcast that. Why don't they do they that? They probably they did. did, I think. They did, yeah. That's, nice. That's what they asked us. Big Dave Baker came in uh -huh. to the locker room, and he had the doc to get in because he is such a big guy. Yeah, he's got and, a building on his shoulder. And it is a high school locker room, so it's so small. And he gave a full speech about the Hall of Fame and how much the Hall of Fame cares about players. And he gave a really cool speech, like how in this business there might be some, th some places that – might not always be for the players. The Hall of Fame is 100% for the players all the time. That is what the Hall of Fame is, he said, basically. And if we were to put you out there to play on this field, we'd be going against everything we believe in. And then he, like, did it. It was a really good speech, actually. It was a very good. Now, a lot of us were pumped because it was like, all right, does that mean we're getting the fuck out of here? <laughs> like, is this what's going on? And we're getting back into this, this whole thing. Maybe an off day next day, tomorrow. Like, whatever the case is. But he handled it very well. And then he said, is, is there any way you guys could go out there so we could have some sort of ceremony for these fans that came out here, though? They didn't expect it. It was like, yeah. So they handled it very, very well. But that probably did great numbers sit down interviews with a couple of the mm -hmm. the names the yes. head names of it from the state i think there's a way you can make it an event still without having the ipso facto fake game but i do like your point of it's the first taste of nfl football and everybody well i watch it oh, uh -huh. yeah. i'll watch the whole thing i want i want and i'll hate it after the first three plays i'm like this ain't Oh, this is like the AAFL all of a sudden. Hey, this guy played in the uh, XFL. He's really good. I like what we're watching. Oh, these these teams don't even know the offense or defense that they're running. Okay. So it's it's one of those, but it, it you are right. It is the taste of football. Slight correction, I might have been wrong. It did start in 1970, not 2002. Oh, <laughs> it's close. How'd that happen? In, two, in, in, in 2002. How'd, how'd, how do we 2002 get it? 2002 was bolded, and, you know, before that, it was commonly played in July, it said. But, you know, we're good. Uh, let's, 1970. Okay. Hey, so, Pat. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sure you touched. I'm sure you guys already talked about it. How did Diggs do? So, this is great question. I'm happy we're getting a chance to see this. Diggs was running around before we got here. So, this is our first real time getting a chance to catch up. Didn't love that they introduced him as friend of Pat McAfee. I, I saw the video uh, while I was in Fort Worth. Felt terrible immediately. I'm like, all right, so Diggs, Diggs is up against it. Well, it's true. Going in there. I understand that. But, they, I mean, your host, a fucking hammer dime. Yeah, come hammer on, dime. The hottest gambling show on earth, YouTube.com forward slash hammer dime. We're making money off of sports mm -hmm. we don't care about because true. of you guys. So, I, I now, I was a member of that team, so I get it. But you went out there. The game got... So we played two innings, and then there was a rain delay. Two innings Damn. is all you played. Oh, yeah. How Come many on. was it supposed to be? Nine or seven? Seven. Seven. So five innings, that thing was cut short. Yes. Okay. And Ooh. then after, it was like a half hour, maybe 40-minute rain delay, they talked to the players. and Where'd you came, guys sit? Hang out in the dugout? Yeah, in the dugout. Oh, you get good conversation yeah, with yeah, anybody? Yeah, good convos. How's everybody doing? Everyone's really cool. up. 
Yeah, hell yeah. Actually, I did not drink at all during the game. Oh. Yeah, you're focused on the game. After oh. the game, probably got after. Were there people bit. drinking in during the 30? Not a lot. During the 30, 45 minutes? A little delay? bit. Like, it was only beer. So, like... Who'd what? you have a good conversation? The fans were definitely... Who's cool? Who's some... Cam's people? very cool, obviously. Everyone mm-hmm. on my team... Julius Page is super cool. That's cool. That's a University of Pitt cool. basketball player. Colby Armstrong, obviously former NHL, former Pittsburgh fan. Guy, super cool. Everyone was really, really cool uh, on my team. Got to talk to a lot of the guys. All their Steelers were really cool. Uh, the whole event, overall, like, I had a really good time. Yeah, but I think they did you a disservice on social media. Whenever they posted the score of the game as if it was a game, because two innings, that's oh, not yeah, a yeah. game. Not real. Yeah. And then not they, official. they posted the score of the game for nothing. You guys got blanked in a softball game. That can't happen. Yeah. But the uh, in a celebrity softball game. Come on. So I didn't know it was only two innings. Then the home run derby, 9-8, I think you guys so won. So what we did was every single player on the team got three outs. And however many home runs you hit in three outs, you just added each team or each player's score up, and then our team won that one. Yeah. What was the score? Uh, nine eight, I believe. Nine eight was the score. You hit two dingers. I had two dingers tonight. Yeah. Totally. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I didn't see any of that though. No. Oh, and, 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 and I don't think their social media stressed enough. How much the home run derby was like PKs for this game yeah, that yeah. got yes. got out early because they put it as the score of the game and the home run derby score. I was like, oh, so there's just two different things. You guys got your asses beat in the game, yeah. but you won by one home run in the home run derby. I didn't know that that was the answer for the rest of the game. I think they kind of threw your yeah. team black under the bus. The a uh, one at bat I did get in the game. Just, I don't even think I saw the ball at all. I swung harder than I've ever first swung pitch, in my first life. Pitch, first pitch, come on, Tony. Tony. Grounded, out, grounded out short, did not hustle down the line at all. <laughs> Tony. I saw a ball and arrow hit a ball. He did. Absolute nuke. <laughs> out of the actual stadium. Yeah, what was Filipponi doing? Throwing fucking fat? As easy as, you, as, easy as you possibly could. He threw that thing high. And it was, <laughs> as I saw Molinaro just... I mean, blast off on a yeah, ball. Yeah. Yeah. Send it into the stratosphere. I played a couple of these games... The purpose of softball, and they give like restrictions on how high you yeah, can yeah. actually throw it mm-hmm. in some of these leagues. The drop of the ball is the problem. Philip Pony, I had to ask you, I was like, who the fuck is pitching for your team? That, that ball came in Joey Mullen or Shohei Otani, high heat. Yeah. 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 He fucking turned on ball. Oh. Incredible shot. I was like, who's pitching <laughs> for this team? Why didn't you pitch? That guy stunk. I mean, that was, I only saw a clip of just the home run for yeah. Molinaro. That pitch. Should never see the light of day in one of those games. Never. I thought that was a home run derby. They had all four of their runs off, I think, off of solo shots. Jeez. Four bombs. Was Philip Pony fucking. Did you mom <laughs> visit? He threw a nice ball to this guy. I tried to tell you, Team he Gold threw- was going to pound those balls. You're lucky that game got cut short. That might have been 21 to nothing. Oh, Philip Pony's throwing fucking Ristano like pitches. <laughs> he looked like Dave Joss out there. Yeah. That pitches I saw, I was like, God damn. And then. Well, he was the one actually. He was pitching during the home run derby. Hey, oh, he forgot. Course. That's and, why they picked him to pitch because he saw what he did in those two innings. And batting practice. He threw, he threw a nice ball. Yeah. Did you have anyone else in the bullpen? No. Nah. Come on. Uh, as soon as I see someone. that guy pitch, yeah, by you the way, hey, get the fuck out. Bring me up in. Give me up all. Let's put that guy on hot corner. He's going to be able to fucking slow pitch one over to mm-hmm. first base. He's <laughs> going to be able to get people out there. He was throwing heat. By the way, of course, Corey Graves tried to eat, you know, at the plate, was taunting the crowd, trying to be the heel. Oh, was he? Oh, yeah. By the way. Um, congrats to you on getting a photo with Corey Graves yeah. without having to completely lose the photo. Just the yeah. back. Yeah, because Diggs Just Graves. The it's a sense. That was his idea. Yeah, he came up with that. That's great. And you said, great. Yeah, yeah. perfect. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> That's great news. He's a good guy. It was a good time. Got a chance to chat with him. Congrats, by the way. Thank Have you. Baby. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats to Marlon Arrow, too, man. It, it, that ball a shot. seemed to go yeah, a long Still going. Yeah. Way. Hasn't landed yet. That pitch though, I'm like, what the fuck is this going on? You guys old, no does chance. Molinaro have a baseball background? Don't know. I must look like it. I mean, it I saw it was, was that's the only off. thing I saw. I didn't see anything from Diggs, but I saw Molinaro <laughs> hit that bomb. I'm like, man, this dude must have played in college. Well, is this guy a fucking <laughs> Ole Miss baseball player? <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought this guy maybe represent Mississippi State down there. Diggs I mean, had a bomb in uh, BP. And a couple of yeah, 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 I'm did saying though, we didn't see any of that. Like I, well, I was. Not I put before, the one out. I was in Cal. I was in Cowtown. Yeah, okay, yeah. and I was trying to keep up. And shout I was out Cowtown. Shout out Cowtown. Thank you, Cowtown. Thank you, Cowtown. 
AJ, you need to get to Cottown, by the way. And I think, I don't know him well, you need to get Schlegel down to Cottown, too. Oh, yeah. Schlegel would love Cottown. Okay, sometimes you got to take the bull by the horns or the back. And that's what I did. That uh -huh. one right there, uh, about 55, 60 inches tip to tip there. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amen. 55, 60 inches tip to tip. Biggest on earth right now, 87. Ooh. Of all time, 100. Okay, so that's just a little baby what? Teddy. Teddy's just a little baby, but he is a sturdy horse. Uh-huh. He's yeah. a horse. He was not moving. He was sturdy, son of a bitch, Teddy, that longhorn. True Texas are, Longhorn right there. Hey, are they just tied up for people to sit on and take pictures? No, no, we rode them up there. We you get on them back yeah, there back at that uh, behind the uh, at that building yeah, back yeah, there. It's right next to the John Wayne uh, it, uh, Museum. Museum, yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah, a yeah. John Wayne Museum you right here, on. literally, like right here. Yeah, there's a John Wayne Museum. <laughs> Legit. So we hopped on them before. Yeah, rode them up there. Or... So we went in there and. Uh, the, there's an artist, uh, a Western photographer, whose art was being displayed in the John Wayne Museum. Good art. Mm -hmm. Great photos. Uh -huh. Great photos. A lot of people on horses and shit, you know what I mean? But there was a line going through there, and we definitely stopped. The person right in front of us was a fan of the show. Uh -huh. So as we get into the room, the photographer's there, you know, greeting everybody, welcome to my exhibit or whatever. And then the person in front of us uh, turns around and starts yelling at me yeah. and Connor <laughs> in this museum. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, and the, pho the photographer guy who is decked out, yeah. he is cowboy, you know what I mean? He's like, oh, yeah. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. yeah. And then we just kind of walk by. It was amazing. AJ, you need to get down there. But anyways, we wanted to be at the game. I'm sorry we missed it. No, it was awesome. And Don't we would have we would have echoed the message that, you know, that wasn't a full game. You guys got blanked. Yeah. No, there was a lot. There were a lot of Pat McAfee show fans there. Really, Washington Wild things? Yeah. Hey, shout out to you guys. Thanks for coming out. We should have been there though. You didn't let us though. I would it like it to be known. Yeah. It was my fault. We wanted to send Mitt. Mm -hmm. Gumpy, I think, wanted to go. There's a couple people. Next time, can we send people now that you know you're going to do well? Absolutely. Here we go. Is it getting rescheduled? Because right. of rain delay? Next year, yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Jay, what you do this weekend? Anything cool? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, normal stuff happening over here. Nothing like you. Didn't have the weekend you had. And also, with your... You're like your outfits that you wear for SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Do you did you have those already, or do you buy them for each show? Like how does oh. it work? I stopped by Cavenders. I stopped by oh, Cavenders right down there. Uh, Willie Wilson. Uh, Willie Wilson okay. sold me that belt Jeez. buckle actually in the Cavenders in Houston, and it was too damn nice not to wear it twice while uh -huh. I was in Fort Worth. You know what I mean? And <laughs> what about the shirt? You get the shirt there too? That was from Cavenders. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was in Cavenders Stockyards. Yeah, that was in Cavenders Stockyards down there in Fort Worth, which uh -huh. Willie Wilson, who did have a million dollar sold belt buckle. His Ooh. belt buckle was the only belt buckle bigger than the belt buckle that I bought in Cavenders in Houston. <laughs> That's right. And he was wearing it right there on his stomach and it said million dollars sold. So obviously we had to ask him and Cowboy Willie Wilson had a fucking response to two, two years or so. Yeah. <laughs> he was he was riding. And, and the boots that I bought uh, came in Crocs all right, for Ooh. Friday night. And then Ostrich, obviously, for Fort Worth. I bought those down there in uh, Stockyards down there in Fort Worth. Uh -huh. uh, Willie Wilson, I asked him, I was like, hey, these are good boots, you know, because I know the, the country boot community is a little bit like, hey, them boots, them boots. He His exact words were. So shit, man. If somebody doesn't comment on those, they don't know fucking boots. <laughs> that's, what <Willie's, laughs> that's what Willie told me. I was like, thank you, Willie. I feel like you're leading me to the right place. He's goddamn right. Get the boots first, and we'll match the belt. All right, we'll, go <laughs> yeah. we'll get the belt after. Willie Wilson sold his first million all already before we got there and after seeing the prices on all this western shit he's gonna make to the second million pretty quick especially after us visiting yeah well and that's what the guy in uh cavender stockyard said he was like because you went up to him while he was looking for boots and you're like hey pretty awesome place here guy goes shit yeah if you have a few thousand fucking dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was pricey big thanks to texas though aj i don't know how much time you spent down in texas that place was a movie dude it was a movie it is that. texas is great man there's so many different it's so big there's so many different spots you can go and also, the big return of John Cena, right? So is he back like full time now? So after Money in the Bank went off Peacock, which had its own issues last night, he cut a promo to the crowd and said that he's happy to announce that this was the first night, not just a night or something like yeah. that. So I think the plan is <laughs> nice. that Jacob Toretto is potentially going to be around. Yeah. He's back. He's potentially going to be around. I don't know. Roman is an animal, though. Yeah, he's screwed, but he's hey, back. 265 pounds last night. He was saying, I'm, too, I'm the only heavyweight around here. I'll roll around on this bitch for 365 days. <laughs> yeah. He is awesome, Look bro. at Heyman's face in this picture. Yeah, he's... <laughs> Heyman's How much does Cena weigh? Do you know? He's still absolutely short. Like, how, t how tall is he? 
I don't know. I didn't get close enough. I'll find out over the you next. You can't tell me the truth anyway because I'm sure he's listed at like six six. No, dude, six, what are you talking two. about? AJ. I tell didn't the they truth. Say six, didn't they say Hulk Hogan was like 6'11 when he's 6'4? No, he, he was listen, when he was he wrestling. Is 6'11. I don't know. It, it's in You're his right. boots. A lot of back surgeries. You're right. Well, it's in his boots. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's amazing. You told me, I remember you were telling me last week that Cena was coming back and I had to hold it in. I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> about so I'm glad it's actually happened. He's listed at 6'1, 251. I think that's, that's probably. That's accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably, probably about right. I don't know. I believe it. I just wonder because the dude is so jacked and so shredded at all times. Like, he's in bodybuilder shape year-round. Like, it's pretty amazing. So, I think he did transform his body a little bit. He is still shredded and absolutely jacked, but it doesn't look like it is the same jack. You know, I've seen The Rock transform his body into this Black Adam Mm -hmm. character that he's creating. And it's been years and years of training and dieting to get into shape to be a superhero. I think John Cena has had to potentially taper his outfits or his workouts to look for whatever character. He is still a monster. Let's not get it confused, but... I don't know. Is he wearing a headband still? You think on those arms? He's got to be. Yeah, he he's had got to be. Yesterday he had a couple. He he was double. Well, he better hope because what, what Roman Reigns is doing right now. I mean, well, it's the thing. Hey, big match, John. I'm pumped for you, pal. But look, at, you're looking in the eyes of the fucking guy. You're saying he can't see you. Well, I don't know if you can see him. Right yeah, now. he's signing up for. Hell. I've never been more conflicted about anything in my life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what no. to do. I Who really- you, AJ, whose side are you on, Roman? Right, you like Roman. I mean, whose side should I be on? Roman. Acknowledge Come on, him who's right Roman now. Roman. Yeah, on. I'm, I'm going to go with Roman. For now. Okay. Acknowledge him. Hell yeah. Hey, listen, shout out to you, okay, uh, being on Roman's side. Smart move. Long yeah. play. This is a smart move because yeah. Roman's the guy going to be for the next 10 years or whatever, you know? And maybe one day he'll have to come back for, like John Cena is doing here, to, to run into the next, whoever sure. the next is. But right now it's Roman's time. Uh, but in a much larger story here... Connor was called an ooze. I was called ooze. What? Yeah, I saw, oh, yeah. saw the uh, saw the Uso penitentiary, and uh, they had their belts, and I said, hey, congratulations, boys, and Jimmy Uso said, thanks, ooze. Oh. And so I am officially an ooze. I will be representing the Usos for the rest of my life. <laughs> now. So they didn't see your comments about... No! no, 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 no. Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy's a he, he's a you know he's a character he, the, the way I know him at least. So. Every time he walked in the room, I thought he was gonna smack the fuck out of. Kenny. No, no, no. He, he, he <laughs> Come gets, here, Oose. He, he gets it. Hey, but that's the thing. When you're a noose, you're a noose. You're allowed to mess with nooses. So now I'm on Just the inside. Just is being nooses. Oose is being nooses. <laughs> it was funny to see that whole thing. Oh man, my jaw was on the floor. Like, Holy fuck, Zeke! He just called me Oose. It was awesome. Did you shoot one back or no? Oh, yeah, was, he did it right away. Yeah. I was like, oh, under his breath, though. <laughs> 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 <It's perfect. laughs> you don't have to remember anybody's name. It's perfect. Well, this is the perfect brother. You know, it's like perfect, you know, cuz brother. Yeah, it's everything. Yeah. And it's so awesome. And, you know, when the Usos became the Usos, I loved it because, you know, I thought the whole world was going to get introduced to the word Us, which we had heard in locker rooms, I think, right, from yeah. players that, or teammates that we've had from Hawaii. I had a teammate who used it like it was machine gun fire. It. It was, oh, and, yeah, it was. and then Woe is one used in Louis. There are some named tags that are on the end of sentence that are used often. So when the Usos got in WWE, I was like, okay, cool. Everybody's going to start calling everybody Us. And then. I think there was a lot of whites who had never met somebody from Hawaii before or a Polynesian or anything like of descent. And they were like, uh, when I said, like, what's up, Boos? They're like, you can't say that. I'm like, oh, so you know what the fuck you're talking about. Is, <laughs> yeah. is, no, no, you're not. Jimmy and Jay are the Usos. There, there is no other Usos. It's like, no, no, no. That, that is like, that's a perfect name for them because they are brothers and they are Hawaiian. Yeah. And it's like a perfect name, but that's just like a, a casual, friendly term. And to hear them use it, by the way. They do use it as if it's a, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. It is really really cool. When you get when you get acknowledged, like when in Hawaii somebody would uh, you know say something to me like uh, "What's up, Oos?" It was yeah. What a moment, AJ. What a fucking moment. It made you feel good. Yeah, I was yeah. like, you could say, "What's good, Oos?" Huh? <laughs> Chuck a shock yeah. at him real quick. Yeah. Chuck a shock from Hawaii. Yeah, now. yeah dude. How you doing? Go so Let's over go. the top. Let him know you know what they're talking about. Hey, so over the top. I gotta go get one of those tattoos. Yeah, you, you should. <laughs> yeah, go get one of those tats. You know, you want to get a full sleeve of that of that old school thing where they hit you. Yeah, they do. Isn't that right? They yeah. do like uh, the sticks. Uh-huh. Like, like, like keep the sticks on yeah. you. Yeah, that uh, would. 
take off. Talk about not having time for a regular tattoo. Something like that <laughs> yeah. would take you two weeks. Could you imagine, though, I walk into, like, uh, SmackDown one night, fully clothed, shirts, and then I walk into the uh, the Roman Reigns locker room, just unannounced. You know, he'll be real pumped about that, I assume. And then take my shirt off and go, what up, Oose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a full thing. Got yeah. to do it. That had to hurt so bad. Oh, my God. His is so... Have you seen Roman's? Oh, yeah. It has gotten so thick Uh, over the years. Yeah, front 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 and back. (laughs) That has to hurt so bad. So bad. Once again, that's why Roman... Both the ooses, too, with theirs coming down, like, over their chest and everything, too. Like, ugh. It's pretty cool tats. It's awesome. They're sweet. It takes a long time, though. Mm -hmm. Long time. John Cena had those same jean shorts on last night. (laughs) I like John Cena's rap album from back in the day. Thugonomics? Is that what it's called? How, like, does he do it anymore or what? <laughs> uh, he's still got it in the chamber. If he needs his fucking John Cena. Hey, and I don't want this to get conflicted over the next couple of weeks. I appreciate what John Cena has done. Mm-hmm. Of All course. Right, I'm going to say that a lot. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Hashtag thank you, John. John. Mm-hmm. You run into a buzzsaw, dude. Yeah, you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Should have went to the other show. Should have uh-huh. maybe showed up in somebody else's face other than Roman Reigns. Should have went. Should have went somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not with fucking Roman right now. Good luck, buddy. Headlock, toss an edge around. Mm-hmm. Lest we forget, Pat Roman is the head of the table, yep. and you know what they're not serving to that table is Chinese food. So John's gonna have a hard time trying to eat. Listen, John right. may hell yeah, who's John may be an ambassador someday soon. So let's treat him with some respect, Nick. Yeah, he might be actually, wouldn't yeah. he? Yeah. He speaks better Chinese, I think, than He's the, any other white person in the history of white people. He's basically the next Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Does, he? Does he? I mean, he's pretty fucking close. It's yeah. Is it called is yeah. It Mandarin? Is it called Mandarin? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there are different dialects, though, so you can refer to it as Chinese. Is he full blown, like, fluent? Like, does he have yes. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yes. Except for. Uh, I watched a video on the internet. I watched a video on the internet a couple years ago that he is fully transformed into a citizen of. Uh, the Jiangxi uh-huh. province, I believe. That's, That's I forget the That's province, but he lived you're saying he's a citizen? That's from Ocean's Six 12. months he was living in... <laughs> thought it was. He just has a lot of information. It the feels like. place. Well, that's the problem. He has all damn near every word in the chamber but information yeah. when it comes to the Chinese language. All right. They don't have a word for it. <laughs> just, just can't unholster that one. Cam Jordan has come out and spoke about Kyle Pitts. Obviously, Cam Jordan as a saint, Kyle Pitts as a falcon, who will become the next great tight end in the NFL. Connor, whenever you heard of Tight End University, founded by uh, Greg Olson, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, he said, well, they're going to have to have Kyle Pitts, the highest drafted tight end since like 1960-something, a man who, while playing at Florida, everybody said that's an NFL guy. Now Cameron Jordan of the New Orleans Saints, who's going to have to play against Kyle Pitts two times a year. Cam Jordan ain't scared of nobody. He's been in the NFL a long time. He said, you know, I've been looking. He's a little light in the ass to be a tight end, isn't he? Shot the Bleacher Report gridiron for pulling that clip from draft. The PR draft show. The Bleacher Report draft show. He's a little light in the ass to be a tight end. I don't know if that matters anymore with the way the tight end position operates, no. but I like the Cam Jordan's like, let's not get crazy here. All right, still yeah. a rook-ass rook or whatever. I'm pumped to see what Kyle Pitts does. I'm excited to see how they use him, and can he be that breakthrough tight end that everybody has been expecting, AJ? I mean, he should. He's so athletic. I mean, I love Cam Jordan. He's so, like, articulate and, and so, like, me too. Whenever he trashes on like people, he always does it. Like he's not scared. I love his personality. I think he's great for the league. But Kyle Pitts, yeah, hey, Cam Jordan. I don't think Kyle Pitts is going to be trying to uh, to seal the edge with you too often. At least his rookie year, maybe they might give him some time to grow into that role. Travis Kelsey said he has recently started taking a lot of pride in his blocking. He said it had it was something for a while that I think people talked about. And he was such a good route runner and ball catcher and could get open. It didn't really matter. But he said it, it, recently he's taken a lot of pride in his ability to get in front of somebody. Because blocking is just getting yourself in front of somebody. Yeah. Now, can you have the proper leverage to maintain that position? And can you give uh, you know an ass for somebody to run off of, which is what every running back is looking for, just looking for somebody on your team's ass. Let me hit that thing so I can separate it there. But yep. I think is it an – is it an effort thing mostly? Technique is yeah. obviously huge, but effort and mindset is a massive ordeal, right? Huge. Yeah, when it comes to blocking, because it's 
guess what? Blocking is not nearly as much fun as running good routes, catching touchdowns. So if you're a tight end, your number one goal is probably to catch touchdowns. So you know if you want to be in the game when it when it matters, you got to be able to block. So, it, But it's absolutely – it's a huge technique thing. Like it's a big deal once they get to the league. And if you have a good coach that teaches them how to block and fundamentals. But then after that, it's just strictly effort, mindset. Like, hey – this is something I want to do. I want to be great at that. I think that's what we're seeing with Kelsey. Um, like he I, said it. He didn't take it serious before, probably. Now he really wants to be a good blocker. Well, and I think I saw from tight end you, Travis Kelsey standing in front of Kyle Pitts saying something. That tight end you thing is so cool because Kyle Pitts is going to get a chance right now to learn the game, which is all you're trying to do. Once you get into the NFL, you're hoping that you can learn the game because it's there's so many little games inside of the game. There's so many situations that only experience can teach you and you have to be around and learn from and everything like that. And the, the, Vets can't tell you the cheat code. Vets can't explain to you how to be great, but they can give you a lot of tips that they learned over their time that can make your life a lot easier and give you a lot better chance. And I think that tight end you and the uh, what is it? The defensive end, the wide receivers and corners, like that type of stuff is going to be vital to these young guys, I think. And Kyle Pitts, I hope he was just a sponge down there. I like that about Cam, though. He did use an awesome football term and just light in the ass. Like, he, <laughs> yeah. right, a little, it's a, a shot, light. but it's not terrible because that's just something that's always said about people. Yeah, he's a little light in the ass. You know what I mean? And there's scouts, though, that live yeah. and die by the bigger the ass means a lot of things. Yeah explosive, mm -hmm. more athletic. Uh, leverage is probably pretty good. The You just look at the ass. If I see a big ass, all right, that's the guy I'm looking for. He's going to get off the ball quick. Mm -hmm. All right, that guy has earned that ass. I mean, <laughs> that is in the scouting world. That is a real thing that happens in football. Too much, probably. But well, Lombardi, I think Lombardi always talks about how Al Davis would always tell, like, look for dudes with, like, bubble asses. That's what he wants. Like, that's what he wants for to be – explosive athletes and you know especially if your ass starts in the middle of your back too those guys like they're fulcrum the lever those dudes can knock people's heads off i play with some guys like that long levers i mean it's amazing how quick it's like Giannis. Giannis got from the free throw line Jeez. to the goddamn backboard in the time of an alley-oop yeah. somehow and then the other night he's dunking on somebody it's it's unbelievable it may be i'm not in a scouting game but you heard it from Al Davis. I've heard it from people. I think everybody's mm -hmm. talked about it. Is that a real thing? I wonder if that's a real thing. Oh, yeah. That's big. Like, they, I've talked to scouts that write up reports. Yeah, that's something they mention. Like, they want to know. Like the, they, have, they all have different terms for how they describe it. But, yeah, it's definitely a thing. So we talked about it. it in, that's why uh, they're in all those goddamn tights at the combine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's see exactly what we got. Here. See the cakes. Yeah. Yeah, cakes. What were you? You were running in white tights, AJ. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Coming out of college, you're like, uh, well, let me put these white spanks on. They'll see his ass. <laughs> it's like Jesus, doofus. look at that pooper on. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Centerville, Ohio creates quite a dumper, don't Holy they? Holy shit. <laughs> shit. Look at that shit bucket. That guy takes massive dumps. <laughs> Bring him in. Well, <laughs> you know, Pat. Don't you think the worst look is though, like when. Sometimes, like, NFL linemen, their pants are super baggy. When, like, football pants are almost impossible to be baggy, but they're real baggy and look like they have a turd sitting back there. Yeah, some guys just have bad bodies. Yeah. <laughs> and they know it. <laughs> Everybody else knows it. And they got, you know, the, the hiking up the pants of guys. There's some offensive linemen that have terrible lower half yeah. somehow, and they still have the leverage, obviously. So this isn't like a, hey, need to have big ass. But you don't see a lot of dudes that don't have – Pretty girthy bottoms doing much mm -hmm. in the NFL. Oh. I mean, Saquon, that picture of oh, Saquon, man. that had to be fake. I I no. felt like Johnny fucking drama looking at that thing. <laughs> Have you ever watched him, though? You ever watched that dude in the weight room, what he can do? Like, I think it is 100% real. How can he be that fast with his calves the size of thighs and his thighs the size of torsos? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand how he's Saquon. super vascular, too. Like, he, veins all through his calves and quads. Yes. Like, that's awesome. And he's up, on his, he's up on the ball of his feet in the one photo. It looks like he is cutting in there. How, how do you maintain quickness with your – your legs being that, I mean, you look like each one looked like it was, it looked like it was elongated yeah. with like a fisheye. Zoom in. I mean, how? That how do you is, tackle that guy? That's the question. How do you tackle him? He's coming back from ACL, right? So they've yeah. been just uh -huh. rehabbing every muscle in his leg. Already go down. Early last year, too. Look at the cat. I mean, just look at the cat. I mean, what the fuck is that, dude? How is that even? <laughs> how is he that fast? He, it, this is, 
AJ Dillon, I know he's got big quads of or course. whatever. But Saquon's here has something to say about it. And they put this workout out. Is this just how he looks every day? Is he walking around looking like this? And this is unfucking believable out of say. I don't know. Do you think this uh, matters at all? Like, is this a good thing for coming back from an ACL? I t- what do you mean? I think I think the more muscle, the better, don't you? Well, I don't know. I just like the the more like stress and pressure he's putting on and everything. I mean, his legs are absolutely monster. See, the like, muscles I think are taking away the stress because they're eating the stress. I just think the more stability. There, I don't know how you remain that fast with that much. I mean, he was jumping over dudes too, like explosive. And when you're when you're that lean too, I think how do you can how does your how are you still run the ball your 30th carry of the game in the fourth yeah. quarter like to to pump blood to all those muscles and you have such little body fat too man like i don't know he's an absolute freak i mean that's that's all it is hey yeah hey there's some humans out there that you just you know some yeah. humans that you'll just never be no nope. you got to stare in the yep. mirror and understand that saquon is one of those guys uh-huh. that we all need to look in the mirror and go oh okay that guy is a fucking alien yeah, yeah. Never be like that. Yeah. all right that's good news let's get to a break we're back on the other side with some phone calls i think we're actually going to do it this time here we go okay Ooh, let's go <laughs> we've covered about everything we had to cover uh-huh oh no yeah we talked about calling right yep yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we hey morikawa Mor- man morikawa geez that guy he's an assassin dude just stone cold killer butter came this week i do feel like they tried they didn't take credit away from him, but you know when he was hitting drives that would take a hop or he had a shot on a par three that could have bounced in the bunker technically but didn't really he hit it past it they were like man it's sometimes it's just your day it's your day to get lucky they were acting like at some yeah. times yeah. when his drives weren't going all the way to the deep rough i'm like come on man like this dude's hitting bombs in the most like crunch and crunch time situations that nobody could hit the open sunday holds 15 16 17 18 in the lead as a 24 year old up and down every single one just draining putts you can get as lucky as you want at some point though the luck doesn't matter on if the hands start to shake or if you lose it at all he is 24 years old about to take over the world we called that a long time ago i can't wait to see it he's going to be the most wealthy guy oh yeah the Big most time. wealthy guy in sports, I think, at some point. And that's saying a lot because LeBron James, number one box office movie of the week. Wow. Right. We'll talk about that more on the other side of scene four. I think I've realized this year with the conversations, you do seem to be a rather normal human, which is very interesting, right? I assume for a lot of people to hear. AJ said, no, you are not a normal human. But Because all the stories about you before this year, to be honest, a lot of people, the way they believed is you were the smug king almost is what the thing about it. And then getting a chance to chat with you, it's like, well, that's not the case at all. How is that like something you have to focus on? I assume it gets hard whenever you're hanging out with, you know, Scott Stapp is hanging Aaron Rodgers jerseys up in his goddamn office. That has to be pretty weird. Well, look, I think that's an interesting, interesting thing to, to talk about. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, people have said things about me, and it's been the same few people, and that's been kind of the prevailing story or thing that's reflected on. Um, I think for me, you know, I talked a lot about the work I did on myself. It was nice, and it wasn't intentional. Like, I didn't sign the show to have, like, and you guys know, we've talked about this off, off air, but there wasn't, like, some agenda doing this. It was, like, fucking talk to Pat and AJ every week? Yeah. Sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it has been, by the way. It sounds amazing. But what it's allowed me to do is, I think, silence all the douchebags out there who were, you know, talking for me and making themselves more relevant by using my name or... You know, running with stories that were not really based in any type of fact. And look, I've grown as a person. Uh, you know, I've said things and done things that I wish I'd handled a little better. But this was a great natural, authentic, like, whatever. Whether it was 15 minutes at the stadium or 45 minutes. To just, like, bullshit and have a conversation. You know, if you're a friend of mine, if you know me, I think this is about as normal as interaction you're going to see from me. It's not a lot of... BS, you're not going to hear cliches and garbage. I'm going to, you know, shoot from the hip mostly. Tell you as much as I feel comfortable telling. I feel like I've been as honest as I could be. I've told you guys a lot of fun stuff. It's fun for me because then I don't have to, like, maybe rehash it on a Wednesday or people get to see a different side of you that maybe they didn't even know was there or didn't think was there. And it's been 
it's been fun for me. I really have. I've appreciated every single week we've done these. And like I said, the best part is there was no agenda. There was no plan. I mean, even us, like we didn't know we were going to go like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or an hour. Or like, we just started fucking talking, right? And then this this came out and it's, it's been a lot of fun. Pretty big breaking news. Oh, no. What's that? Oh, he got that. Oh, he got that. Goddamn break! Can't happen. Oh, oh, no. Can't God. win with it. Oh, no. oh, no. Everything I just said was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been cool though. If it was. Yeah, it would have been cool. Would have been. Diggs just got a darn Schefter. Oh, oh my God! It was. God. It was at Ultra Weed Hater. Oh. <laughs> I <hate that>. <laughs> <laughs> He got a cock in her. What was it doing on my timeline? Bro, my cockner's just juju yeah. it. <laughs> This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. The sun's out, bums are out, and hopefully your pubes are not out. Hell yeah! <laughs> also, flip-flop season is upon us, and you're out here with those post-pandemic toenails? Yeah. Oh. Don't worry. Our friends at Manscaped have you covered. They just launched their fourth generation performance package. Hell yeah. And their cool. Shears 2.0 nail grooming kit is involved with the performance package 4.0. Join the Manscaped movement by going to manscaped.com forward slash Pat for 20% off and free shipping. Wow. That's M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com forward slash P-A-T for 20% off and free Free shipping. The perform. Small June bug. No, it's just so nice. It's hard to say. <laughs> you can't believe that something like yeah. this could even exist. It's hard to get the words out of my mouth mm-hmm. because it's magic. making you choke up, right? It is the performance package. 4.0 includes the new lawnmower 4.0. This trimmer will change the way you approach your grooming routine. The fourth generation trimmer for. You get it. Manscaped.com forward slash Pat. That ain't gonna happen. I don't know. I try my best. It's just, I don't know if we just can't do it. it. Manscaped's the best. Know that the Shears 2.0 is a luxury four piece nail kit featuring tempered stainless steel tools, and it includes slashed tipped tweezers, rounded point scissors, what? fingernail clippers, what? and a medium grit nail file. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh, geez, it's got that's it all. Medium, that's I mean, gritty nail file. It's good, we know. it's good that we know it's a medium grit nail file. Yeah. Not a uh, full like average. Well, there's there's right, easy, isn't... medium, and hard. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one's right there in the middle. Can basically take on anything. It's got medium grit. Uh, welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. Hour two here on Monday, July nineteenth. Uh, a couple hours removed from Money in the Bank in Fort Worth. It was awesome. Thank you listening on Sirius XM Channel eighty two, Mad Dog Sports Radio, <laughs> and watching at YouTube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. Something we have to address some in house stuff real quick, AJ, if that's okay. Yeah, I'd love to. All right, so there's somebody called Colorado Ped Patrol, CPP. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think it's like, the mo- modern Chris Hansen. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. those pads, AJ. Yeah. I think modern Chris Hansen out there in Colorado. Hey, well, let's, why don't you have a seat? I think is going Let's on see. with Colorado uh-huh. Pet Patrol. I, I I do I just learned of this literally as I was sprinting to the bathroom during the break in coming back. I appreciate Colorado Pet Patrol's um, you know like efforts into making our world a better place and eliminating absolute scumbags. He released a video saying that I am sponsoring him or I'm going on a ped patrol maybe or something like that, or he's coming on the show. That is not the case. Nope. I just want to make sure that's not. I appreciate what he is doing. 
I and I, it might be a team. I was literally getting briefed on this mm-hmm. as I was walking in by Billy Tubes and Bruce Brown. <laughs> like, hey, just a heads up, this is going on. So I'm not 100 percent sure what it is. What I learned of, I appreciate your service, but we might have another catfish situation like uh, uh, no. what oh. happened to uh, RBT, yeah. who oh, somebody yeah. from the show texted, say hey, we want to have you on or whatever. I appreciate what you're doing, but I, I, I don't know if that's my show. Like maybe when AJ's hosting, maybe catch him on a, a day where AJ, and maybe AJ set this up and I didn't hear about this. Oh. Oh, but that's why we're having this forum. Did you set up the Colorado Bed Patrol to come on the show in August and I didn't know about this? Is this Friday or what happened? No, this is the first time hearing of it. I don't know if you'd want him as a guest, but I figured you may want to go like on a ride along like you would do with a cop. Are you going to do that and go sit there? You could have Foxy film. It'll be great. I did that. I, I watched Chris Hansen do it a hundred times. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate that this is but happening. you could grill the guy. You could grill the dude that brings a four pack of Zima for a seven year old. No, but how do you not <laughs> smack him in the mouth? Like, I don't think I'm supposed to be there. You know, I don't, I, this is not something I'm supposed to be at. You know, this is something mm-hmm. I'm supposed to watch. Because if I'm there and I don't punch the dude in the face, then forever I'm the guy who stared at a pedophile who was looking at Zima, an eight-year-old, yeah. and didn't punch it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a... They don't say that about Chris Hansen. They don't t- expect him to punch him. Well, Chris Hansen's been covering white boy Rick in Detroit uh-huh. and uh, his entire career. He's put a lot of people in jail. He's a big J journalist much differently. Imagine if I'm just sitting in a room with this. I mean, there's no way. Th- these are the worst people on earth that are being... I love what the Colorado Pet Patrol is doing, allegedly, from what I've been told. Sure. I have no idea if it's working because I think Chris Hansen's thing ended up backfiring because there's a loophole in the yep. law and somebody something oh, really? happened. It was like... I, I feel like the Chris Hansen situation, you know, raised awareness on what was going on mm-hmm. to a lot of us that maybe didn't know that that was happening. But then this one, I guess, obviously, it's still happening. I have no idea what the fault is. I just want to make it clear that unless AJ set this up, I am not. I do not know who this person is. It's the first time hearing of any of it. But were you, the first time you heard of it, were you a little bit worried that he was maybe doing a report on you? He was trying to, like, tell you, hey, buddy. What, dude? Some sketchy stuff out there. No. No. Did okay, you? Is that I just want to make sure. So when I mentioned Colorado Ped Patrol, you were like, <clears throat> you had, like, that moment? No, not with me. I was for you because you mentioned it. I was like, oh, no. Is Pat getting blackmailed by somebody? No. Just know that it that is not something. And you can't really blackmail me because I'll just go right here and be like, listen to what this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I am not really, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm pretty wide open on most things. When I heard Ped Patrol, though, I was I was a bit alarmed. Right. What, what, is this? what is huh? a Ped Patrol? I thought it was Foot Patrol. And then, there, yeah, well, there's a lot of things. Yeah. And then... Obviously, they go pedophile patrol. I'm like, whoa, what? They're coming on. You just got to ask the guy. Ask the guy who he's been communicating with, why he thinks this has happened. It has to be somebody. And once again, I cannot stress this enough. Thank you for your service if you're taking down pedophiles yes. out of our. Like, thank you so much. But I did not know this was happening. And maybe this will probably lead to a thing now. This is what I got to learn about. You know, I get baited and trolled into answering these things because I am. You know, so wide open all the yeah. time. Yeah, but there's over. nothing you can do about it if it's some sort of a elaborate ruse that some other guy's setting up. I mean, how are you ever going to defend against that? I don't know. Then Samuel Brown, when this That's happened before, saying. he got mad at me for it, and I was painted as the bad guy. I was like, I'm just fucking living, dude. What are we even doing here? Nice to learn about RBT. It was nice to learn about you. Hey, keep going. Thanks for the, yeah. the Paul Mahler mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. I had nothing to do with it, and I'm not the bad Hey. Let's catch the son of a bitch, the rat bastard that's making these people do it. Yeah. I'm on your side here. I want this to end as well. But thanks to the Ped Patrol for doing what you're doing out there. Let's go to Dakota in Georgia. What's going on, Dakota? Uh, how are y'all doing today? Hey, not too shabby. I mean, not as good as those people that are featured on the Colorado Ped Patrol. Mm-hmm. I mean, those people are just... What? How does it... You could what are they? Those Chris Hansen videos. Yeah. What? Why do you have this? Oh, I thought we were going to party. With an eight-year-old? Oh, I didn't know that. What? what? No, that. we were just going to talk. We were, just, we were talking. I, mean, I was just going to talk. I do love her. when they bolt out the front door and there's 400 cops outside just beating the shit out of them. There should be more. <laughs> Hey, did they, so, did they really find a loophole, though? Did some of those guys not go to jail? Yeah, I think a rich guy got it, and then a rich guy got a lawyer. And the lawyer I, think I mean, he you would think, though, himself. like, if you're a successful, somewhat business person, don't you think if you get caught by Chris Hansen, even if you end up finding a loophole and not going to jail, your life is already kind of ruined when that goes public? Yeah, and I think said buddy killed himself, and then oh, his geez. family 
I think his family did something. And that was like the loophole because it wow. disappeared out of nowhere. Remember, it was oh, like, yeah. go, 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 and then it disappeared out of nowhere. You can still get a cameo from Chris Hansen, but I don't know if you can see him busting down. That's what Colorado Pet Patrol is. Georgia, uh, Dakota, we're going to have to put you on hold, get you in the next hour, pal. I apologize. The pedophile conversation just heated up a little bit. <laughs> kept going. Just rolled heated up a little bit too much. You know what I mean, AJ? I mean, it's a shame. It's, it's, yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand. Ooh. Jay, you all right? Uh-oh. You okay? Trying I had Jay. it up. Mm. Oh, is that uh, right? Mm. Okay. Mm. His name's Jason McAfee, by the way, not Mac. <laughs> and he'll be here in hour three. In six minutes, we'll see you then. But let's talk about what happened directly outside of WrestleMania in the MetLife parking lot. And this guy tells Zeke, yeah, hey, just follow that car right down that way. If that awning was literally six inches lower, I'm dead. Hey, who the fuck told you guys to drive down there? So I get a text from Nick that says, uh, call me when you can. And I never get that type of text from Nick, right? Granted, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, the boys, the Roadhawks didn't have their WrestleMania moment. We talked about it earlier. All of us felt like we were in, like, a trench in World War II. <laughs> yes. Tell you what, the WWF would be proud. That's, uh, that's a lot of fucking destruction. I thought the entire building was coming down. The best looking uprights I've ever seen in my life. Hey, who the fuck told you guys to drive underneath there? I will never forget April 7th. They said to come to the loading dock. Yeah, they want to set up a shot, so they're gonna come off cameras and like show that we're like tailgating. The tailgate spot. Do a U turn? Is that what he's saying? I don't know. We'll just do it a U turn. Wanna move up? And this guy tells Z, yeah, hey, just follow that car right down that way. And so we're thinking, okay, no problem. Back it up. So Z moseys on down this way and just fucking. just heard was a RV that was clearly too tall for an awning that was hanging over and Zito was going so fast in that the entire RV ended up under the awning and it wasn't until they were all the way under that Zito said oh I think we're stuck (laughs) and at that moment he puts it in reverse and rides back through all of it and that's what the this the piercing sound of metal oh. that you heard ripping through. Uh, 
How we Did doing? I fuck everything up up there? The backside fuck too? How's it going, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I just keep fucking sending this through here. Alright, just sending somebody out, just hang tight, alright? All right. Did you check the top? I mean, it's, yeah, it's destroyed. No, oh, like the whole thing is. Oh, fuck. Yeah? Like, they're gonna fucking send me fucking no, through somewhere. You know, there's not you, everything, everybody alright there? Yeah. yeah. No. Stay calm. Yeah, you're right. Stay calm, kid. They told you to go through. It's one turn. It's on your clearance. I am on the bus with the rest of the WWE <laughs> roster driving by. There's two fire trucks, there's a cop, there's paramedics, there's quite a scene. Fucking A. How's it going, sir? Right. Oh, yeah, they sent me through, and I was just like, all right. Yeah. And we're just rolling by going into the, the fucking MetLife Stadium. And I get a Corey Graves. Is that your RV? <laughs> yeah, you guys hear about Max? These guys drove a fucking RV into the arena. <laughs> into the arena. That road to WrestleMania, man. Hey, I'll tell you what. That's the furthest I've ever seen any vehicle get underneath that fucking awning. Look, the, look at the ladder on the back of the RV. It's almost fucking off. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show, Hour 3 on this magnificent Monday, July 19th, 2021. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine, which AJ had no respect for. There it is, here we go, AJ Hawk joining us from his attic in Ohio, wearing yeah. his Centerville Elks long sleeve t-shirt. Uh, it's, uh, you know, man-made three quarters. Oh, yeah, you love the three-quarter. You love the three-quarter. I forgot about that. AJ, thank you for joining us. The Hammered Down Boys, who will be live today, 15 minutes or so after this show ends, which might come earlier than normal due to the fact that I got home so late and could barely (laughs) sleep last night. This show might stink, but the people that watch and listen do not. We appreciate you wherever the hell you may be. Today on Hammered Down, COVID Cowboy, what are we betting? What are we talking? Are we doing Olympics predictions? Is Gabe Morenci back on? The kingpin of World Games betting and predicting. What do you guys got? So I, I believe Gabe is on tomorrow to break down the Olympics, but I am bringing someone else this week to talk Olympics. Just I'm not going to just give Gabe the title of best Olympic Whoa. gambler on the internet. Whoa. I'm going to make wow. him earn it this week. So, but today we got baseball, Whoa. a little bit of NFL futures. Right now, it's pretty much all we're doing besides Olympics. Sounds very exciting. Well, that was like a riveting that I dropped a Schrager or Rappaport the other day is what you just did to Diggs there. And it's hard to be a sports gambling show in a time where there's little to no sports. But I don't necessarily love the attack on at sports rage there from Diggs. You're not just going to hand the kingpin title in the World Games predictions to Gabe Morenci. Does he know that you have this type of slander inside your soul coming out of that mouth underneath that cowboy hat? He does not. He does not know that. <laughs> is Gabe maybe never coming on the show again? I no, think no, he so. will. He will just to prove himself. I mean, you saw it. he bought a Canadian, the Canadian jacket that they're going to be wearing at the open ceremonies just to spite a Canadian Olympic speedwalker. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, He'll, he told me he was giving us good odds on a gymnast that wasn't named Simone Biles. Mm-hmm. And he had, uh, he had some figure skating inside sources. He <laughs> wow. was giving out. Picks on who's going to have a good routine. Wow. I mean, it was, and then I asked him, I was like, hey, Gabe, and Hammered Down airs literally Monday through Friday live every single day. It is a great show. They are printing money for people on this show somehow, some way. In these sports that don't matter, we're winning money with them and beating the dog shit out of FanDuel Sportsbook. But I asked Gabe, I said, hey, Gabe, you're the uh, World Games Kingpin. I don't even think we're allowed to say the oh, name man. of the thing, the World Games Kingpin. I said, uh, 
I get into speed walking. He goes, ah, oh, fucking speed walking. <laughs> he, has, he has a battle with some speed walker that he does not like that either lost him money in the last Olympic Games or something happened. I didn't get a chance to hear the entire. So the jacket or the outfit that the Canadian Olympic team is wearing for the opening ceremonies is a denim jean jacket. Obviously, it has Canadian flag on it, blah, blah, blah. And the Canadian speedwalker tweeted out, I'm not wearing that fucking thing. And Gabe said, if you're not going to fucking wear it, who cares? You're a speedwalker. We don't need you. Okay. <laughs> so the speedwalker has a little edge to him. And I, I will say, I like that. there is some maverick speedwalkers out there, and they will yeah. separate themselves from the pack because in speedwalking, it's a lot of hip action. You, know oh, yeah. you got to do a lot of hip action because the feet aren't allowed to both be <laughs> off the ground at the same time. One foot has to be on the ground at all times. So there's a lot of hip... They, I mean, they are... They so are show, like, oh, yeah. go, show me, can you uh, walk across the studio? I don't really... Know. That's the rules, though. All you gotta do is keep one foot on the ground? Yeah, yeah. And, and what happens is a full... You know what I mean? Like the hips. Uh -huh. The hips, you start like... You, you start like tossing. You know what I mean? just a poop you have walk. to do that? What if you just try to walk normal? Well, you get Fast. fucking run out of the race. Yep. You walked out of the race, dude. You get walked out of there. Crushed. They're talking full... You know, who's that pitcher that... Um, bladed his ankle. Kurt Schilling. Oh, Kurt Schilling. Kurt, Kurt, Sch oh, Kurt Schilling, you know, that whole thing happened and whatever. When you watch the speed walkers in the Olympics, no. every fucking one of them is going to have blood pouring out of their feet, uh -huh. out of their shoes. It is a blister haven yes. the way they have to walk <laughs> with these shoes. I watched it one night. It was like a seven-hour race, too. They're just walking through this goddamn thing, and they don't break. Their hips are... We're oh, talking yeah. the entire time. What are their dude? arms doing? Are their arms swinging wildly? Oh, yeah, they're punching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Elbow. A lot of elbow room there. Are they allowed to wear hokas or no? <laughs> I think hoka is one of the presenting sponsors of <laughs> Ace Ventura. <laughs> That's how they walk. Yeah. Ace Ventura, Jim Carrey, watch the speed walking race again. Yep. Like, All right, when I need to look fucking absurd, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Boom. And they do that around the goddamn. They do like So people really miles. gamble on speed walking? Like, I guess you gamble on everything, right? It is oh, tiring, yeah. though. I mean, you've got to have good conditioning. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Gabe Morenzi had an in, and then he, uh, he that walker burned a bridge. <laughs> yeah, put on that goddamn denim jacket, okay? <laughs> We're all wearing them. We're all wearing them. I would like to keep an eye on the Maverick Walker, though. The oh, guy. yeah? Yeah, have to. Because he seems like he's got a little edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He'll probably be shaking the rules a little bit as well. He might be gliding. Maybe an elbow or two. I think there is a challenge, like... So win. somebody's watching every single walker to make sure that they don't oh, ever yeah. have two feet off the ground? I mean, to be clear, I was watching this like 2.30 a.m. at training camp, you know? So it was like I couldn't sleep. I might have misheard some of the rules. I'm pretty sure. But when you see 30 straight dudes just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It is hard not to watch. And then the goddamn... Uh, when they have the uh, the ribbon, the banner. The mm -hmm. checker flag? The, no, no. The I'm talking about uh, the floor routine. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Will Ferrell. Oh, my God. There are so many sports that Gabe Morantz is going to give us all the answers for. <laughs> and Diggs is over here saying, this guy stinks. Don't listen. There is a rule known as the straight leg rule, which means the, mo the moment the leading foot touches the ground and until the leg passes under the center of the body, the knee is not allowed to bend. <laughs> oh, so that's why your hips have to Oh yeah, that's why you got to so pop it. Hips have yeah, down. show us like can you describe, can you show us what Diggs just described? So I think he's saying the yeah, front leg has to be straight <laughs> until <then>. yeah, boom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why they do the fucking hips. Yeah. yeah. I mean that that I bet you got to get your hips replaced by the time yeah. you're 50 yeah. if you're doing that. Hey, the speedwalkers are beating the fuck out of their bodies and they ain't running. They ain't jogging. Uh -uh. <laughs> They're not even waltzing. No. They're walking their asses an entire marathon. The, the U.S., do we have a guy this year? Oh, do you know? Yeah. We got a guy. I, I'm worried oh, about yeah. the amount of grit, you know? No, we got a guy. I'm worried. We got a maverick up there in Canada. I know. That's all right. We beat the fuck out of Canada in soccer, ain't that yep. right? Oh, hey, yeah. hey, hey, it's hey. our D team. In a way, hey. hey oh. Our D team's pretty good. We got a guy named DK up there. He's just a goal scorer. You guys lost. What is this? The, this is the Concafa? Gold Cup. They scored 20 seconds in. Very good game. one nothing at finish. Ah, soccer. Oh, oh man. So it was over in 20 seconds. Now, uh, I didn't watch 80, that. 89 <laughs> minutes and 40 seconds at the very least. At the least mm -hmm. of least, nothing happened. It's electric. Soccer. Uh, oh. They're on different side than Mexico now, though, so they'll only play each other in the final of the Gold Cup. See you there. What, so are there tournaments every single weekend? See you there, L3. Well, it's Super Bowl every weekend, AJ Soccer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what just. Yeah, I still don't get it. How there's every week. Okay, so what's 
what Super Bowl is next weekend, Gumpy? I mean, it sort of seems. Well, like what happened, AJ, is there was a pandemic, he so everything got canceled. So now they're trying to make up all the tournaments. Well, then let's. You need okay. to understand that too. That you don't need to be living and dying with every fucking game for the last <laughs> two years that have all been made up in the first month. Well, we do. No, no, because then you get me all worked up. Yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, this matters, and then I realize like. Oh, being uh, dramatic. It doesn't uh, matter. And, you know, I see you almost crying. I'm like, fucking hey, yeah. dude. And then I mean, the English, literally the Champions League starting tomorrow. There's another Super Bowl. Hey, this Gold oh, Cup squad, this is going to be the guys coming off the bench to support in the A-team, though, for the Olympics. I like, understand. Hey, DK's a goal scorer, yeah, yeah. too. Let's put his ass up there. That guy finds it net. I think he had a hat trick against Martinique. Yeah. Ooh, wow. I watched again. When the fuck is the MLS Cup finals? <laughs> MLS is still going. A guy, guy on Nashville scored a hat trick in six minutes on Saturday night. So I'm night. saying, dude. Really? Yeah, it was fucking awesome. So he's gone, right? Where's he from? <laughs> I have no idea. Is he an American? He's not on our national think he's team, American, obviously. No way. Have we figured out an answer for why Trey Young isn't on the goddamn Olympic team? <laughs> still have no idea. I don't think the cardboard beds are going to help, though. There's no yeah. way he's going to go over now. Yeah, Trey Young takes that tweet, delete tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't invite me if you guys got. I'm good. I'm just kidding. Mayflower cardboard moving boxes. Hey, Ka Kawhi Leonard also. Uh, I guess he partially tore his ACL. So never mind. I was gonna say he's been sliding under the radar. Why yeah. isn't he going over? No one wants to go fucking play over there. <laughs> yeah. None of these guys want to. You know, this is supposed to be the Olympics. Yeah, for your goddamn country. When I was when I was a kid, this is real. When I was a kid, I wanted to play. All I wanted to do was play in the Olympics when I was playing soccer. Now I wanted to be rich. I knew that was probably gonna come from other things, but I wanted to be. You know, an Olympian. Yeah. Played in the Olympic Development Program. Got a chance to do that. I was in Project 2020, I think, which was supposed to be an Olympic thing. I mean, there was, there was a lot of shit, and the Olympics were like the big dream, the big goal. Olympics have become a big old sham, it sounds like. Yeah, oh, sleeping yeah. on cardboard boxes, AJ. Did you see this? They're sleeping on cardboard oh, yeah. boxes. I, oh, yeah, I, I saw that, but it seems like the Olympics, there's all kind of stuff going on. Isn't I just saw the guy who was supposed to do the opening ceremony and music is backing out because of something like old oh, tweets no, exposed. No. Like, uh, there's all kind of issues. Oh, old tweets exposed. What is who was it? it? Bob? Kid Rock was supposed to open the Olympics. <laughs> <Kids? laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> All Game summer long, the torch? all summer long is uh, Olympic summer games. You know, hits. not anymore. Well, uh, <laughs> that was gonna be Diggs' walkout song. You had to cancel it because Bob was trying yeah. to cancel himself. Mm -hmm. Rory McIlroy did an interview this morning. He's like, "Well, I'm going to the Olympics and there's nothing to do there, so I guess I'll just golf for 16 hours a day and try to fix my game." So they're in the bubble, but it isn't like <laughs> Disney World. No, no. And it looks like they're not gonna have enough like isolated alone time to play video games or anything like that in no, that kind no, of a so no you, amenities it looks like they're in a hospital there and go back to that wow it's like an office building Aren't you glad we weren't good enough to be Olympians, AJ? I mean, now that we're yeah, looking. I mean, I would imagine like do the do the basketball players get like exactly. a special dorm or something? They have to have something special. Nah, a couple more boxes for those big guys. Uh huh. <laughs> couple more boxes no for them. I, let's not get it twisted. I'm pumped for the Olympics. Anytime I get a chance to scream about us being better than everybody else, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, call it whatever you want. I get excited whenever the world of sport gets to kind of overtake the political international game. You know, like sports uh, throughout history have been a great, I don't want to say distractor, but maybe a unifier. Uniter, a uniter, yeah. Yeah, a unifier of the world in, in the sports. I'm excited for it to start Friday, but God damn it, it feels like everything has to become a shit show nowadays. It's like, can we not, can we not just make this awesome, pay them if we have to, put them in a goddamn Olympic village? I, I was in a Olympic village light out there in san diego i think san diego has one it's like oh. a training ground and then in colorado there's one as well for soccer it was beautiful these dudes had like their own little apartments and this whole little thing and they they maybe had roommates and this whole thing but it, it felt like in in the facility the cafeteria was incredible it was beautiful you know it was like a college football facility but for olympians i was like this is this is what i want to do i was out there playing obviously for the odp team and doing everything and i was like this is it this is it and everything we're starting to hear from it now it's like Come on, why has everything got a fucking stink now? What, what is the deal? Why is every why they got to sleep on cardboard boxes? Like, put them on a goddamn bed. We're asking them to go run a, what, a 10-1, and we yeah. want them... I mean, just, can we not make this good? What's the... There's enough money out there to make everything good at this point. 
All right. It's, it's, and now, now I know the money is not equally distributed, and there there's a lot of problems. I'm just telling you what reality is. But with the amount of money that's being spent and earned in the Olympics, and the amount of potential money that's getting, you know, for these decisions, can we not invest it into the athletes so we can get the best fucking thing possible, as opposed to just looking at the bottom line all the fucking time? I mean, what can we not make things awesome anymore? Come on. I agree with you a thousand percent. At least it's only the beds that are cardboard cardboard here. I believe in Sochi, the entire town was built out of cardboard. It's like fake buildings oh, and yeah. stuff actually, like that. So. Actually, was yeah, it's plumbing. Well, well and I guess. I mean, the bad thing is. It, once it leaves, though, like haven't you seen those pictures? Like oh, once yeah. the Olympics leave, the, these giant stadiums are just overgrown because they don't maintain them anymore. They don't have events there. Like it's some places do not really rebound after the Olympics comes to town. So I watched a uh, an animal documentary. I think it was on Netflix. It was about the uh, the Akak monkeys. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. Oh, nice. I believe How do you spell that? With the cast. Well, it's C A Q U E at the end. Yeah. I, I I think I don't. know. I don't know if it's Akok or Bukok. Mukok? Mukok. Muk yeah. Definitely Bukok. No. no <laughs> they might Bukok, but <laughs> the Mukoks, these, this monkey hierarchy. But if his name is C-A-C-Q-U-E, why are you putting an A or a B or something? Before? No, it's, no, it's no. a brand of monkey. Uh, a Mukok <laughs> is a... a <laughs> A legion it's of speech type of, of yeah, you get it. I believe, species. I believe it is pronounced macaque. And macaque. Yeah. I watched the documentary. Perfect. Okay, and by the way, I watched the documentary three days before my SmackDown debut, and <laughs> the amount of macaque monkeys would not stand for what's going on right now because they are a hierarchy tiered. Mm -hmm. If you're born in the bottom tier, the bottom rung, you stay down there. They're, they're oh. getting pushed out, and they. They live in this overrun temple, I think, and they kind of have like an actual hierarchy and who lives higher in the temple and everything. It's only a matter of time before we have like an Animal Planet special that are living in these stadiums. Oh yeah, oh, and it's yeah. gonna be. And I'll tell you what, it's probably gonna be the macaques or another brand of monkey. They're gonna be fucking using the taps. Wow. They, they, <laughs> they these things. You watch the macaques operate, and then every other monkey species, and you're like, okay, so they're definitely. We are definitely. I mean. I saw a brand of these things, not the macaques, but another monkey, uh, pulling fruit from a, from a tree, okay, walking with it, okay, going down to a river, mm -hmm. cleaning the fruit, what, and then handing it to the baby, and the baby eating it, and then washing off the hands and the thing, and then they just walked away, and I was like, those fucking monkeys are smarter than me. So we are the same. Those monkeys are smarter than me, but it's only a matter of time before the stadiums are used, I think, right? Because those aerial pictures and shots, whether it's in Brazil or Russia or China, Greece. I think has some, or Greece, those things are magnificent stadiums that hundreds of millions of dollars are spent on for a six week period and then they're never used again. Maybe that's where we should move the, the show to one of these countries. <laughs> oh, <laughs> buy an Olympic at, stadium. Yeah. Yeah, I bet, it's, I bet you can get it pretty cheap now, some of them for sure. We might need somebody that we might need to bring your dad to, to be the maintenance man. Though. Well, the Wait macaques, the macaques run a strict business. All right, ship. Yeah. You're not just going to get that thing from the macaques for low dollar. They're no, going to no, ask no, for no, premium no. top dollar with the macaques if they are anything like I think they are. Let's go to so this whole. So before you get to your car, the whole documentary was about these macaque monkeys. Well, so the macaques were just a chapter. Okay. All right. What you choose to watch and what you, what you have, what you have seen and what you have not seen is just continues to just break my brain i saw 15 minutes of space jam this weekend then i stopped oh. it because my wife and i will probably finish it here in the next couple of days and it was tough to continue save that one for the wife she'd been mad terrible. if you watched that by yourself right well anything that i watched what if she would have been upset because i don't like a lot of things that i don't stick with it so if i watch something whenever she's not around she's like i thought we could have watched that together she's dying like, to watch space jam 2 though uh it's a new movie out we tried to watch uh jacob and uh Dom Toretto, yeah, uh, fast nine. nine. But it's not at home. It's at the theater, and we haven't had time to make it to the theater. So it's really like the first movie in a long time that we've been able to watch together. So that isn't the bigger story here. The bigger story is here. Uh, is I got 15 minutes into that, and I was like, okay, I don't. I fucking am a LeBron fan. I don't want to watch this. I hate this. It <laughs> is pretty. <laughs> no. Yeah, it is a definitely a massive you know support piece just for. Yeah, LeBron I thought Mitt to... saw it a few times already. He did. Well, yeah. Mitt is a massive LeBron guy, and Mitt kept saying, "It's a storyline. It's a story." Storyline, it's a storyline, and I understand that, mate. It's a fucking movie. Okay, yeah. I get it. There's a storyline in this whole thing, but as a LeBron fan, the first 15 minutes yeah. is tough to be like, okay, 
Is this actually LeBron? Is this what we don't know about LeBron? Is this movie LeBron, which everybody says in the end is there? So watching it was a little conflicted. I haven't finished it yet, so this is a little bit of an ignorant take, but I will say the first 15 minutes was tough. You're right. LeBron, just like the way he's a basketball player, that's how he is as a human. He's also an actor. He has all the skills. He can do it all. He's the goat I get it. all the facets. I, I, I get in the first 15 minutes of not show. I get, I, oh, I get yeah. that he's a thespian. I've seen him in Sprite commercials. <laughs> yeah. I've seen him in Nike commercials. Sure. I'm just telling you, the LeBron James... So this, this rings well with me, I guess. So in the WWE, I'm Pat McAfee. Mm-hmm. Okay? In the WWE's, like, pre-show thing, it says... The characters being depicted on the show do not replicate that of the actors play, whatever. You know, like saying, hey, yeah. what you're seeing here is entertainment. This is not, I'm me. Like, so whenever people were burying Pat McAfee earlier, it was like, they're not going after Michael Cole, who's also, you know, he said it in yeah. there, mm-hmm. Sean Coltar or, or something like that. Like, that is actually me. So they're going after me. Watching Space Jam, it was LeBron playing LeBron. And I didn't make it through the end. Okay. I didn't make it through the end. I will probably tomorrow, because Cena's supposed to be at Raw at night, so I'll probably watch that and see what goes to. on at yeah. Raw. Just push that next month. But I'll probably watch it tomorrow. Whenever. I'll watch it whenever. Um, as a LeBron guy, I was like, all right, I hate this guy. But yeah. I guess that's good acting. That's good heel play, good I guess, acting. by LeBron. I guess yeah. that's good Oh, he heel. plays a bad guy early? Well, that's the thing. He yeah. is not just insufferable. To, it's kind yeah, of unlike him. He's no. just it's early. brutal. But I think it's for the character development. I don't know. It's what Mitt was telling yeah. me. I Mitt mean, is Cisco and fucking Ebert wrapped <laughs> up into one bowl. You know what I mean? So I guess we can kind of take that. Did you watch it with your kids or no? I did not. I realized I do have HBO Max, though. So yeah, my, my eight-year-old has been mentioning it. He wants to watch it. But he doesn't really know anything about it. I think he just hears his friends talk about it. So he wants to see it. Well, that's kind of the world we live in, the mob mentality. Mm-hmm. If one person has an idea, normally a lot of people are going to have the same idea because they look to somebody else to create their opinion. And there has been some bashing of Space Jam by some notable people. Oh, yeah. I will say cool. I haven't finished it. Seems like most adults hated the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seems- it's not for adults. I mean, if I was LeBron, I'd be exactly. like, yeah, guess what, bud? It's not for you. Agreed. 100%. This is just like my Drake conversation mm-hmm. from earlier. He's not making music for me to like at the moment. So it's like, no you big mean, you just You mean you just don't like the music he is making in the moment? He's not uh, making music for me, okay? And maybe he is. I don't different. know. I, don't know music, I, I would imagine Drake says he made, his music is for everybody. I doubt he's saying that. No yeah, yeah. way. You don't want to. You don't think he wants to make all the money? Like that's he the already, has. Yeah. already has. He already money. has. He already has. He doesn't said, matter. They don't. You think Warren Warren Buffett's two hundred years old? The guy's still working every day. People don't stop. Yeah, Warren Buffett and Drake, two very different people. Warren Buffett is trying to manipulate the stock market, and he has been able to do so by eating the same McDonald's sandwich every fucking morning, driving that terrible car, oh, yeah. and doing his whole thing. Okay, shout out to Warren Buffett. Way to go! You've made shout money out, Warren. in hey, a place Thank that you, Warren. a majority of the world hates. So good for you, Drake. Though. He has had an evolution in his um, artistry where he now just sells out full stadiums with all women in it, basically. Yeah. And that's why he's an R&B. He's gone full Mr. Loverboy, has the heart tattooed in there. Now, maybe he's making music for me while wearing the heart in his hair. I don't think so. I think Drake's much smarter than to be trying to win me over. He's not looking for me. But that's just a different... He's he's making stuff for other people. LeBron made this for kids. We knew that. Is everybody going into this, though, that's saying it's a bad movie, knowing that it's for kids? Or are they judging it for kids or just for themselves? Well, I mean, he kind of fucked up, too. If he would have just named this something else, then he would have been good. But anytime you say Space Jam, then you yep. have all the nostalgia of the first movie. Mm-hmm. Who A lot of these people that are seeing it were, you know, like 10 years old. And I heard LeBron is a massive sellout in it because they just pull like a bunch of good clips from Warner Brothers movies yeah. and kind of like smash that in there, kind of shoehorn it in there, flex a little bit. So a lot of people are saying, hey, he, could, he couldn't come what? up with oh, a good yeah. movie idea on his what own. What do you mean? Uh, they're like, like, uh, like they, there was a scene from Casablanca. They put him oh, in it. Then there was a scene oh, from The Matrix. They put him in it. There was a scene from Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Threw him in it. Like they really did pull out all the stops to basically get every big Warner Brothers show or Smart, uh, movie. by the way. In the reason this why- sounds terrible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's what a lot of other job, people man. have said, AJ. I, I had no idea it. that like they were doing all that. Oh well, yeah. So let's 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 dive into this a little bit more. Okay. So whenever you say if he uses a different name, then he doesn't have access to all that stuff, mm-hmm. right? All the sure. all the Warner owned stuff, and then they use that all to obviously market it and build it as big as possible, just like the Avengers do with all their fucking people showing up and all the goddamn uh-huh. stuff. And by the way, it's a great show. 
But the reason why he did Space Jam is because how important Space Jam is to the sport of basketball. Mm -hmm. He felt like he needed to carry the tradition of Space Jam from one generation to the next. Now, just like with everything else, I think nostalgia is a beautiful thing because only the bangers survive. Only the good survives. Only the good memories or the good songs survive. There's a lot of eras that have terrible, terrible, terrible music that was debuted during the era, but nobody knows about it past two, three weeks because the phone was so or the song was so bad. And then when people say, back in my day, we had absolute bangers, like you had shitbag music as well. That stuff just hasn't survived. I think a lot of that happens with the memories of old movies as well. Cause I've gone back and watched some of these old movies and I was like, Man, I thought Pest was a lot better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. Pest was a lot better. And I think that happens to Space Jam. So you're, you are rolling the dice with nostalgia pop, mm -hmm. which is a real thing. Uh, but I have not watched the full movie. It, it, but a lot of people have said what you said, AJ. It sounds terrible. I hope not, though, because I'm a LeBron guy. Yeah, LeBron and you guy. need to go in with the expectation, like, okay, this is made for 5 to, you know, 12-year-olds. This isn't made for... 5 to 12? Uh, that's basically where I'd throw the range at. Maybe, really? maybe up to 15. I guess we uh, get them up drop to 15. Lower. Yeah, it, it's really... It, it's... <laughs> It's a kids' movie. Throw it in. So what's the deal? Rich Paul's dating Adele now. Yeah. That's right. What? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What? Allegedly, <laughs> I don't know. They were at a game together. Well, and Adele. Adele looks great. She's lost a lot of weight. Rich Paul's doing well. What are I mean, you saying? It's a, win. it's a big win. Well, she has self-admittedly explained that uh, she has had problems with her weight in the past. What are you saying, AJ? What? what she, she said that? You know what I? Hey, oh, you know what I think is garbage with Adele. Yeah. So she lost weight. People were coming at her like saying, "No, you shouldn't be celebrating the fact that you lost weight." It's uh, like a weird deal. Yeah, it's like Jonah too, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. Jonah was representing a pudgy group of dudes whenever he was out there crushing it, and then when he lost weight. I believe there was a pudgy group of dudes saying, you sell out, you change, yeah. you did your own thing. You like vegetables now? Yeah, like, it's a, like, it's a wild world, you know? It's a wild yeah, like, world. Hey, like, sorry, man, like, however I, sorry if this is whatever weight you're at, whether you're big or small, like, this is where I feel best. This is how I operate best, and you're going to tell me how I operate the best? Hey, I'm sorry. I'm trying to live. Yeah, yeah, what if there were things he wanted to do? Like he wanted to go down to Cowtown and he wanted to sit on a bull, but they wouldn't let him because he weighed more than the weight. Come on! Oh, no. So Zito, Come on! Zito oh. was told by the cow oh, no. lady. Oh, oh, man, it was a... Oh. Wait, did they ask you your weight, Z? Yeah, the cow oh, yeah. lady that was running the uh, Teddy and Come Turdy on. Longhorn ride uh, was the mom, and then I believe the daughter and the son were running the... Each individual Longhorns. Uh -huh. I got on Teddy's back. Connor got on uh, Turdy's back. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zito was told, you weigh 250? By the cow lady. And Zito goes, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I follow up with what the weight limit is because I am a much heavier person than people assume as well. She said 260 or so. And then uh, she looked back at Zito and told Zito that he could get on this particular this cow. Yeah. Yeah, don't on, don't, don't get, get on Teddy. Teddy. No, no. But I was about to get on Teddy and I'm like, is Teddy all right? They're like, for you, yeah. And I'm like, I don't oh, know if you know that. Geez. And they're like, no, no, we know. And then, <laughs> it was it was a wild scene. It ended up with Zito saying, nah, you're good. And then they said, sir, you already paid. And he goes, yeah, keep it. It's a tip. <laughs> and then just walks away. So Zito did not get on the back of uh, yeah. on a Texas lawnmower. Yeah. Kind of got body shamed out of it. It was wild. It yeah. messed up. Zito, those are good longhorns, though. Yeah, you know, hey. I, I did jump on Turdy, and I took a souvenir home. I did kill it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go to a break. Oh, no! Eight. Zito did not kill Tardy. No. <laughs> Shut and up. The thought was he Shut might. Up. Yeah, if, if, I'm if Z got on Tardy, Tardy was going to lose its shit and start, you know, bowling the streets, going through everybody. I'll tell you what, Teddy, <laughs> I could feel Teddy. Oh, yeah. You know, underneath Breathing. me. Breathing. I could feel that thing. You're uh -huh. wrong with him. Yeah, I felt like I was. I feel you. You mm -hmm. exactly. Yep. Did you? Live? You know, hey, he's got to be all doped up on Xanax or Valium, isn't he? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. Get that's it. why we did say we're so sorry about this Turdy and Teddy, <laughs> but thank you so much for laying us on your back and getting off of Turdy and Teddy. We did yeah. full thank yous. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. Wait, his name yeah. was Turdy. That was his. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. fucking making up Turdy and Teddy, yeah. dude. You can see the names actually on the uh, saddles on their uh, noses right there. Nice. Turby. Turby. Well, it was a little bit of a turdy situation. Yeah, he was taking some turdy. All right, we're back in four minutes uh, with some more phone calls. We got Michael in Detroit. 
Learned a fun fact about Detroit. <laughs> no other city in the history of cities has been rejected for Olympic offers than <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> Detroit pitches. What, this has to be every year you guys are pitching for once oh, a year. Oh, it must yeah. be. Oh, every yeah. single year. This is our year. The record for the city with the most rejected bids to host the Summer Olympics. Come on, we have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, I love this place. No. We, love, we love the opportunity. Did you hear the Kid Rock song? <laughs> All right. We're back in four. <laughs> <See ya. laughs>、potentially taken over their 30 edibles <laughs> because I thought more teammates of mine were going to want to indulge in that either before the game or after the game. And to get to London, you go through your own TSA here.、Mm-hmm. The team has TSA that you have to check in. Here's my passport. The Colts already have it. They took it all from everybody. It's literally you get your bags checked and then you're through. Put them in a little thing. We're good to go. It's the team's TSA. Get on the bus, fly over there. I forgot all about them. Didn't utilize them at all because how things quickly change. Right. After we lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars, we're on the team bus. They go, hey, we're going through Heathrow Airport through the real life TSA. And at that moment, I look around, I go, oh no, I have a lot of, I have some things in my bag right now that have vitamins in them. I have to get rid of them. And at that point, I'd whittled it down to like 15 of them. And I look at Vinatieri and I'm like, buddy, not good. He's like, what are you going to do? I was like, I guess I'm just going to throw them away in here. Couldn't do that because right next to the trash can was an English police officer. So I couldn't just walk up and dump a bunch of edibles into the thing next to the guy. He's going to ask questions. We're going to the Heathrow Airport. Now I got to do what I got to do. We finally get there. Police escorts, a lot going on. So I just take down 13 edibles. Duh, yikes. See you later. <laughs> Vinatieri looks at me and goes, How you doing, bub? I was like, I'm Good now, but things are about to happen. He goes, I got you, little buddy. I'm like, Thank you. So we go through the little check in thing. And right before we get to the scan of the bags thing, it all hits me.、Mm. I might as well have been on cloud 45 over there in London. They check my bag, boom, boom, boom. I get selected. Something was in my bag. So now all of a sudden I'm like, oh no, did I leave a couple in there? Oh my God. Vinatieri starts walking ahead. He turns around. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, they got my bag, man. <laughs> he's like, what's going on? I'm like, I have no idea. So he comes and stands with me. He's like, I got you, bub. I was like, I, I, they might got me for real. I might be staying the night in England. They go through my bag. Turns out, had a vibrating、uh, toothbrush. <laughs> Thing was vibrating in my bag.、Yep. They're like, oh, it must have been this, or it must have been my big ass toothpaste because you can't fly with that. <laughs> I was like, you got it, pal. I get all the way back to the, to the plane. Lost my ticket somewhere. Somehow I don't have a ticket. So now I got to check into the gate, people, that I don't have a ticket. I'm like, I'm on this plane. I promise I am, but I don't have a ticket. They're like, what's your name? I'm like, Patrick McAfee. The McAfee? No, yeah, whatever you want to call me. I just need a ticket. So now I have to sit there and wait as somebody brings me a ticket from the front while my entire team walks by me, knowing that I'm on cloud 50, just having a good time. Grigson walks by, just upset, obviously. I wish he would have known that I was in a mood where he should have talked to me there. It was just a nightmare. The London trip for me from beginning to end was not good. And I think that happens for a lot of NFL players. Welcome back to the show. 
took my ear thing out. We have been live, I guess, for a couple seconds now. Who knows how long? Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. Monday, July 19th, 2021, years after zero. AJ Hawk joining us to Hammer Down Boys. Joining us. Uh, massive, massive time to be alive because Canada's camp of North Coast of Humboldt County, California, is announcing they have a game of the year sweepstakes. What? what? Any NFL game, any city, winner and a plus one. Free flights, luxury hotel, and great seats for the game when you go to CanadaCBD.com and click the link on the homepage. Is it going to be seeing Brady back in Foxborough or oh, will you be seeing oh. the Niners slice and dice the Packers in San Francisco? Oh, oh, no. oh, this season is your oyster, says the Canadips Cow- Coastal Cowboys. Uh, head to CanadaCBD.com, click the link on the homepage. Winner being chosen by August 31st. That's C A N N A D I P S C B D. Dot com, click the link on the homepage, and you could win free flights, luxury hotel, and great seats to any NFL game in any city. And also, while you're there, go ahead and stop by and get their Canada CBD pouches and utilize the promo code LIPBOOMERS and get 20% off site wide. Ty, you're chewing a little bit of Canada CBD right now. Why do you love this stuff? Well, because it feels and tastes like a real chaw, but it doesn't have any of the harmful stuff. It also makes my joints feel a little bit better. My okay. knees, my elbows, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because it's high quality CBD straight out of the hills of Humboldt County, which is out there in Northern California, which that's is why they exactly like the Niners right. and said that they're going to slice them. Oh. That's right. Any city, any team, any game, free flights and luxury hotels. Maybe we should enter, AJ, yeah. huh? Sounds pretty good. Did they already get done with the... Uh they had like a giveaway where you go see 30 foot dope plants, right? Crop tober. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I think that oh, one okay. is. Done. So we still have a few months. Okay. No, no, I think that, yeah. that contest is over. Yeah, they picked the winners. I think they're they picking did. the winners, though. Or I want to be October, then. Well, because you got to set up for October. Yeah, yeah got to let oh, those plants grow. The plants got to get that high. Okay. Plant ahead. Well, not just the plants got to get that high. Ew. <laughs> 30 foot high by October. That's the saying. Yeah, knee yeah. high. By the 4th of July for corn, Uh 30 foot high by Halloween. That's right. They always say it for marijuana. Every Mm -hmm. year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, they say 30 foot, you know what I mean, by Halloween. Hey, where are we at right now? (laughs) Let's go to Marcel in Kansas City. Congrats to the uh, Kansas City Chiefs being so good. Congrats. You did it. 5-1 against the Raiders. Patrick Mahomes, I saw a graphic this weekend. Yeah, yeah. I didn't remember. There's that whole beef about victory lap around the stadium Uh and everything like that. Graphic was wild. Bleacher Report Gridiron just going ahead and just grabbed that spoon and started to plot as much as they could. What do you want to talk about, Marcel? I just want to, first of all, we only talk about what in Kansas City. We only talk about professional football teams, so we don't say much about the Raiders. And uh, number one, number mm-hmm. two, <laughs> I'm just with y'all. <laughs> Thanks for giving me uh, uh, a buy for a minute. I want to say when I, uh, I heard you guys talking about LeBron, all I want to say is I get it if you don't like the movie. I even get it if you know you are uh, going into the realm of him trying to master things, or people trying to master things all the way and have everybody he loves. Hey man, let me tell you something. I spent time with B.B. King. Oh, uh, brother. I I spent time with B.B. King. And he told me, you know why people still know me today? He said they know me today because I never tried to be more than what I was. If you wanted to come over and be on my side, Uh then that's where it was. I am a blues man. Keep the people that you have. Hell yeah. Hey, I appreciate you, Marcel. Who's that? Uh, Beatrice? Uh... Yeah. Uh, B, uh, Satchmo, yeah, obviously Louis Satchmo. Uh, oh, yeah, Fast course. Domino. And, and then uh, Beatrice something is a big name in the uh, blues or jazz. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mighty Mighty mm-hmm. Boston's. Yeah, let, going back. Let, it, let me tell you what? something else. Now, this is the same guy that when I met him, I said, Swing Band. First thing I said, this is first Thank you, Marcel. <laughs> he, was, he was still going. So was he con- Was he congratulating LeBron or telling him to stay in his lane? Stay in his lane. He said, uh, stay in his lane, but you got to understand. You got to respect it. Yeah, okay. Marcel knew B.B. King. And um, 
<laughs> Marcel, I appreciate it. It was hard to hear. Yeah. I think yeah, Tommy would have been good for us. said we don't care about the Raiders. He hey, didn't say that. We care about real professional teams right <laughs> now. Right. I appreciate that. <laughs> but, man, I went back to, uh, I forget his name, too, music class in high school. Mm -hmm. This guy. We yeah. did a full breakdown. Big, big. Big hair. You remember him? I almost Dark said Mr. hair. I almost said Mr. Jack, but that was that, awesome. Hey, I almost said Mr. Jack, too. It's something, something. in that. Anyways, I learned all about it. This guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best was, music teacher out there? I assume I was the worst student he had ever had. He would say <laughs> something. and I said, can, you, can you play a song that I know from that genre, and then I'll figure it out? I don't just play every song. And then he would break down all of it. I'm like, man. I didn't even play the fucking recorder in fifth grade when they forced us yeah. to. I don't know any of this. I respect it, but I don't know. What was the Beatrice? Because I, I remember saying beat rice in the class, and he was so... I got kicked out of the class. Get out of here, Pat. I literally got kicked out of the class for saying beat rice, and it was Beatrice. Something happened. That's in music, and I think it's in blues. You mean a beat... Like, there's a a blues musician named Beatrice something? Yes. Yes. Are you thinking Chuck Berry? All right. Knew that was coming. I don't know how, Gosh, but I yeah. knew let's Barry go, was going to get it. Let's in. go to tie. Let's <laughs> go. I knew it. <laughs> you son of a bitch. He did that leg thing. He does the leg thing. With the I, that's all he does. Mr. I, Mr. Bronco. Sweet, no, pull up a Bronco. Guy. I can't give you a kid. <laughs> you should see his picture today. Big hair? Oh, yeah. This guy had his big hair. He showed up. He was like 22, fresh out of college. Oh. He loved music. He had his fucking hair. He, they put him in his classroom that was on the other side of like the cafeteria, a little hole in the wall. I mean, this yeah. guy was treated terribly. He is, he was a great teacher, but I remember screaming beat rice at something. I got kicked out of the class. That's it. I'm done. It's going to tie in text. I can't take it. Yeah, I can't fuck take out it. Here. Get out. I'm not today, McAfee. Get the hell out. It's going to tie in Texas. Something happened with Beatrice, dude. Hello? What? How are you? Uh, doing great. How y'all doing? I got to give a shout out to the other tie in the room. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, so I just had a quick little shout-out, a little recap for the Friday. Houston, best SmackDown in the history of SmackDown. Let's go, dude. Yes. Uh, I got some homies that we were actually doing production for the show there. Huh. So just wanted to give a big shout-out. Probably one of the best production setups we had in a long time in Houston for all of events. Music, mm -hmm. entertainment, all of it. Y'all killed it. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate that, Ty. And big shout out to the crew that puts the whole thing together. There's a lot of people moving parts. Insanity. That stage, the set they showed on Friday, that LED board is what, 700 yards big? Insane. Mm -hmm. It is Massive. a lot. And then you got to take it down, move it over four yeah. more, take it down, move it down, take it down, move it to Cleveland. Take down, move it to the and the, the whole the lights yeah. above the ring too. It's, crazy. it's unreal. Beatrice Rivers was it? Ah, Beatrice Jazz. I just searched. Yeah, me too. Rolling. Beatrice Rivers was the name that Rolling. popped up. Sam Rivers is Rolling. obviously Rolling. Yeah, Sam yeah. Rivers. The song Beatrice yeah. by Sam Rivers. Yeah, Beat Rice. Dude. Okay, <laughs> let's go to Mitch in Detroit. What's going on? I thought it was. Blizzard. How's it going, boys? Hey, not too shabby, Mitch. I was trying to relate to Marcel. I got to tighten that up. I like to know a little bit about anything so I can have a conversation about everything. And in that particular fashion, Beat Rice just slipped the tongue, and I got it wrong. But I will try to be better, Mitch. What do you want to talk about? Um, some of the ties called uh, earlier. Just want to give a shout out to you guys on the weekend with the insane crowds live that you had. Are you guys going to do a live in in studio show? And are you going to get? If you are, are you going to get the two-footed sleepy driver to come over from Ohio? Great question, Mitch. Will we be doing live shows? Once again, this is something Foxy hasn't been around enough to remind me to do this. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. yeah, that's right. Yeah. We did tell oh, yeah. you got yeah. a lot on your plate, all right? Yeah. If I remind you every single day, you'll probably find I have nothing on my it. plate in comparison to you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in comparison to Foxy, I got he is walking into. Oh, yeah. You gotta remember when Foxy showed up with me at WWE, they're like, Who's this guy? He he was super babyface. Oh, he works for Pat. He has to deal with Pat every day. He's a hardworking guy. Now he's missed four out of the last six events. <laughs> Not <laughs> good. Four out of six? Yeah, when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Four out of the last six. Michael Cole has missed two TV shows in 25 years. I deserve it. Foxy's missed four out of the last six. Mm -hmm. And it was very well worth it. Every, that The weekend was awesome. You're yeah, a great, great guy. It was awesome. In summer is normally an off time, anyways, for these types of events, but. 
Wow. They're not happy. I mean, Cole Four really. Four out of six, you're right. Yeah. I, was, I deserve every bit of it. Yeah. Cole really laid it out, too. He was like, Fox, you're not going to be here on the biggest night of Pat's entire WWE career. Mm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And then, he, and then a couple other producers piled on. Yeah. Foxy's walking into multiple buzzsaws, yeah. not just one. Foxy <laughs> was well-liked by a lot of people yeah. in WWE Keyword. quickly. Very quickly, he was well-liked. And then now people, I think, are starting to look at him a little bit sideways. Yeah. Oh, no. Was that a few days? Hey, perfect for me and Z. Now we're the, we got yeah, the baby face. Yeah, we got the baby face turned now. It's awesome. Heroes. There was one time where they said, oh, it took two people to replace Evan Fox. That was the only compliment that was given to Evan Fox the it. entire weekend. Basically. And that person also right away after buried him. Yeah. And said, well, well, that's okay. We'd rather take two that show up and then it does. Exactly. What's up, Diggs? I have a question. You didn't deserve that, Foxy. I'm just telling you what you need to prepare for. Yeah, no, I appreciate what it. They're I think saying. I did deserve it. He said honest. biggest night of your WWE career. Was that night having fans back and stuff like that, was it just different or was it bigger than you wrestling? Or It was it, – man, I don't even know what it would be like if I was wrestling in there. Like if that – if me and Adam Cole one-on-one -on -one with A.J. Hawk in tow and, every, and Nick and Darius – in that arena, it would have been fucking awesome. I could see how everybody's like, "Hey, this is so yeah." yeah. It's much much better when you get there. Well, and he had the open mic. Like I didn't, I personally didn't think that, that was, that was going to happen. There was a lot of questions on whether or not that was going to happen going into the show. There was a lot of, "Hey, this is planned, but it might get canceled." Yeah. Hey, this is planned, but it might get canceled. Did hey, you do it a couple times though? Didn't you address the crowd multiple times? Nah, just no. once. Just once for a minute. I just, all I saw in the video was the guy telling you to wrap it up the whole time. Tamario, good dude. He also has some thoughts oh, on Oh, yeah. Foxy, he's a good guy. He piled on. Yeah, he, um, he did an entire thing because, you know, it, like Michael Cole said earlier, we are supposed to call him at 1210. We call him at 1217. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's strictly because uh, we were having a conversation. I looked up and oh, shit, we got to call Michael Cole. In WWE and in production world, in the real world, I guess, of like stuff, everything is like timed out, you know? So it's, hey, would you like to talk to the audience for a minute? We will call it the McAfee Minute and everything like that. I'm like, oh, fuck it, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Knowing very damn well that there was no chance I was going to be able to stop in a minute. I haven't been able to stop in a minute my entire life. There's no way it's going to happen. I just said yes. And then all day it was like, maybe it'll happen, maybe it'll happen, maybe it'll happen. Then when I get up there, I didn't know they actually were expecting me to go exactly one minute. They must think I'm very <laughs> fucking talented. Yeah. And Greg Hamilton announced it as countdown from 60 as he's talking, like whenever into the arena. And I'm like, well, they shouldn't do that. I don't know. But I got up there. Cole was slapping my boot, okay? And Tamario was doing this entire thing. And in my brain, I did not have an out yet. So I don't know. I was trying to wrap it up, but I didn't know where it was going. But it was, they were so nice to me. Houston was so nice to me. And Michael Cole, he did say all those terrible things about Houston, though. Yeah, true. Yeah, he did. I mean, I had to bring that to light. You know, I had to bring it. He did not know yeah. what I was going to say. By the way, Michael Cole did not. Nobody asked me what I was going to say all day. Not once. Which is mind-boggling, yeah. to be honest. My, my, like, even at NXT, when I would go to NXT, and, like, hey, you got, uh, you got the change in the hour segment, you're cutting a promo or whatever, how long? Seven minutes. It's like, okay. So I got a seven minute promo. <laughs> and they're like, what are you, what are you gonna talk about? I was like, well, I think I'm, <laughs> that's a long, I guess I'm gonna go here, and then I'll go here, maybe, I don't know, and then we'll go here. And they're like, perfect. And at least they know what I'm potentially gonna hit on. So it was like, uh, you know, a little bit of a talk. This one, there was no, con plausible deniability is all Michael yeah. Cole kept saying. Don't tell me, I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know, I don't wanna, I wanna be able to say, I did not know whenever you go, I'm like, are you sure, Michael Cole? Because <laughs> all roads in my brain have led to you <laughs> being the bad guy uh -huh. here. It was just, uh, but nobody really asked. It's cool. I'm like, here we go. All right, I'll go. It's great. I mean, I'm sure, don't you think it would be a little different if they were airing it live on the show? Yeah, but as soon as it, as soon I mean, it's going to get out no matter what, but if it's not out from their cameras, though, they could somehow protect themselves. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as it happened, I was like, as soon as it was offered, I was like, oh, somebody will yeah. get this. Mm -hmm. Somebody will get this. And then we yeah. had Connor and Zito there. It was like, oh, we'll be able to get for sure. Yeah, we'd love to. Very nice of them to let me do that. But it not being on air, I think, allows for a lot more freedom, you know? <sighs> I got sure you're, building, you're going to Cleveland next. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And rolling loud, too. I don't know. Where, I guess right. I'm being Cleveland. I don't know. While the Rolling Loud's going on in Miami, right? I don't know. Yeah, Michael. Cole. What is what is Rolling Loud? Well, it depends on which context you say it. Mm -hmm. what, what context are you talking about? The one I'm speaking of right now, or just in general? If you were to use this in conversation and look cool, 
a little bit of both. I would like to get some info. Okay, so rolling loud is a you know catchphrase that I don't think is used much anymore, but took over for a while. And a, you're smoking that loud is like super smelly, super mm-hmm. dank mm-hmm. marijuana. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, that's loud. That mm-hmm. loud pack. Loud, loud. loud oh, means oh. smell. The smell is the loud. You know, oh, skunk. Like, oh, Stanky. Oh, 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 that's oh, loud. Oh. That's so rolling skunk. loud refers, I believe, to a blunt rolling. Just like you put oh. the lime in the coconut mm-hmm. and you twist it all up. You know, same exact kind of metaphor there. But in this particular thing, I believe it's a massive concert down in South Florida, which there probably will be a bunch of loud toked. Down uh, there. Yeah. All the pots will probably be smoking by the time we oh, get yeah. on there. But yeah, that's what it is. It's a concert, and I guess there's something going on. So I think I'm in Cleveland, I think. No, I'm Wait, sure. so you're going to this concert in Cleveland or Miami? So the concert's in Miami. SmackDown's in Cleveland, though. So, so, you so you're, doing bo- you're doing both, though? From uh, it looks like a flight. That's a long one. Miami's way oh, down yeah. there. Yeah. Well, I wonder if you'll Cleveland's call the matches from Cleveland that are happening in uh, Miami. Maybe. Yeah. Because I would assume if it's potentially Roman v Cena, you're going to be wherever they're at. And I don't know if they're going to be treating Rolling Loud to yeah. that like they would, you know, the the sold out crowd. Yeah. In Wait, Cleveland. Rolling Loud's another wrestling event? No, it's a it's a music festival. It's a rap music festival. But imagine if. How are you talking? Cena comes out. Your time is up. My time, time is, is now. Oh, performance too. Yeah. Oh God, I didn't even thought of that. Rolling loud, Donner. There's just going to be some matches there, AJ. That's how it's tied together. Okay. Has it has that been saying said publicly? I thought that's what the Michael Cole said. There's going to be was. Michael Cole. So said earlier, there's going to be a few matches down yeah. there. So it's like, what what does that okay. mean? Because Cleveland, oh my God, I get a chance to go back to Cleveland? Yeah, oh. here we go. Or am I going to be down in my area and show up Well, it's Very a win win either series. way. Everybody that listens to this show, they yawn then, right? Or they're psychopaths, right? If, since I yawned. Yeah, everyone oh. should yawn. Yeah. Even the dogs. Mm-hmm. Those eye contact. Yeah. Dogs yawn? Dogs yawn, yeah. Fucking look alive, dogs. You ever see a dog yawn? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know they yawned because I yawned, though. I, I think so. I think they will, yeah. I just yawned, you got me. See? Oh, there goes Z. Another one. There yep. goes Z. Hey, Gosh. I'm happy I can donate a little yawn oh, off. Nice. I'm about to get one. I can uh, feel it coming. I'm, it I'm gonna hold Watermelon. It. All of the minded people in here have yawned since no, you did. I do believe it's a similar tie into the IPA thing. <laughs> serial killers. Like if you didn't yawn, you're a serial killer. Shit. You drink IPAs, <laughs> more likely to be Serial, serial killer. killer. I agree with that's that. stats. That's not me making that up. That is something no. that was proven Science. by people that are researchers. Mm-hmm. The whole chat just said they yawned. Marinzi, when did the IPA Marinzi thing? said he hasn't yawned in like five years. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. I also only blinked five times through it. That makes sense. <laughs> Jay. Jay. No, no, no. <laughs> Jay, you. Marinzi's words, hey, not Jay's. Jay, for the last two hours and 50 minutes, were you blinking that entire time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking sleeping out here, AJ. Jesus, please. What were you going to say, AJ? I have no idea now. No clue. He that, didn't yawn. That happens to be mid sentence. What am I going to do? Well, the IPA it? thing. No, the IPA thing. You saying people that drink IPAs are more likely to be serial killers? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's stats. That's anyone with that hair pushed forward like that is absolutely a serial killer. <laughs> you look like Bro, Chris you, oh, look at that. That in the back. It's, you don't remember fucking Hoover dude. High School, dude? Oh, I do. Yeah, I watched yeah. the show. Are you kidding me, bro? John David Booty, I think, was on that. Oh show. yeah, he was. Was. so was McElroy. Was he? Greg? Yeah, yeah. Greg, not Roy. Imagine if those dudes had Twitter, man. They would have been. Oh. Hey, do you remember? I remember an episode of that, Pat, when they were playing Tebow's team down in Florida. And they mm-hmm. talked about, like, how this guy, Tim Tebow, who was like Jesus, they said how great he was. They showed highlights of him, like, back in the day when they were, that show was on. Why don't we get. This looks absurd. I don't know. It's, good, it's kind man. of a good look. Why don't we get Coach JB coaching down there at Hoover High School? Oh, oh man, bring him back. Fucking Phil Rivers and Coach JB squaring off week two, Alabama high school football. Yeah, I don't yes, know if please. Coach JB will be allowed to coach high schoolers. What? 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 Talking college about? kids only. What? what? Why? Just because. What? Why? Because it's vernacular. What? what? And everything he says. They what? swear. Oh, do Your they? High school coach yeah. Kids. yeah. I thought I thought the high school has changed mightily. No, since. dude, the football community oh, damn, is dude. still the same. They got to be the same. Phil Rivers team. I think Connor swear. may be right. They're, yeah. There's definitely places they try to censor what coaches say to kids. Yeah, sure. especially with parents being well, involved. Well, not well, I, aren't you coaching now? Aren't you coaching now? I will be here in a couple weeks, yeah. Ooh. Are you allowed to say anything? Have you gotten a pamphlet? Say no fuck words? 
I learned that I have a like a five hour instructional thing I have to watch on the internet and answer questions to you know to make sure everything's good. I guess you'll do that. Of course, I, I have to do that if I want to do it. So yeah. So there was a major at West Virginia. I don't know if it's still there called uh, ACE. Athletic mm -hmm. coaching education. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. I believe that five hour thing you could get a pamphlet for with the, the, the athletic coaching education yeah. degree gets you in four years. Really? Yeah, I think so. So you don't really have to major in it. Yeah, I took one class over there and believe me, I I thought school was a joke. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't <laughs> I didn't really do much of it at all while in college. But I was part of the Big E's all academic team one semester, so I still well, got that no big deal. Cool. But uh, cool. my majors were things that I could just memorize the night before the test, take the test, my memory, I took advantage of it and just, you know, did the whole thing. I popped into one athletic coaching education class one uh, semester. Yeah. Even I couldn't go back to that. Really? Attendance was the only thing that mattered, which was a problem. Mm -hmm. And then once you got in there, boy, there was a lot of open discussion about coaching techniques. It got oh. phased out. It got, yeah, it had to have. Yeah, 2019. I assume so much. Yeah. I wasn't Rich Rod coaching that class. I, by the way, I think he was. Oh, he really? I think he was one of the professors. Was there. he? Yeah. Coach Tressel taught a class in our. It met in our team meeting room. He taught like a football class, and he talked to people that took it. And there were some players that tried to take it, and they're like, "Absolutely not! Do not take it. It's impossible." Like they said, it was really hard. So that's when you guys were just cheating completely. Yeah. Right? There was no players time. in the in it. I don't think Coach Tressel let any players. Yeah, sure, in the dude. It's a bit of a tune. What is this? Oh. Did Jay make this? Yeah, who is this? Uh, DJ Griff, obviously. Griff. You hey, you know how you bitch. find an Ohio State University alum, AJ? What about it? You take the pizza out of their hands on your front porch. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> OH, buddy. Ew. We're back tomorrow. Chris Mad Dog <laughs> in six minutes. Oh. Cheers. Fucking nailed it, too. Where did you, you get that awful joke? It was used this weekend. You know, all those, all, everybody that works. West Virginia one? Was it used West Virginia in the joke to you? No, it was Ohio no, State. Yeah, it was to Ohio State. It was It was used as Ohio State, and I we heard it, and we're like, oh, we're jotting that one yeah, down. Yeah, that's a really good <laughs> one. We are jotting that one down. It, it's actually in my phone as insert name of university below. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's actually still with my number one. Uh, it's the new phone. It's probably too high def, but yeah, it's literally. Wow. Oh. Is that the 12? Yeah, Pro. Max. How is it? It's good. Anything different? Which camera are you on? That one? Yeah. Oh. Literally. Got it. You like the Max, really? The big one? You know how to spot a <laughs> boom, university alum <laughs> paying for the pizza. <laughs> literally, as the guy was saying it, I was like, fucking A. Hey, Gold. Got to remember that. Shout out to Stu, by the way. Shout out. Big Stu. I think Stu lives in Ohio, actually, so he probably just fires that Ohio State one off. Oh, yeah. Four. Pow, 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 ping, pow, pow. Michael in Detroit, I want the Summer Olympics to go there, pal. I want you guys to win a game, yeah. too. I hope we keep trying, and I I would also like to win something, anything. Yeah, our, soccer make it team, our soccer team, no one cares about. Just won a championship no one Whoa, cares about. Yeah. We talked about The it. MLS? No. I, I don't Con, think so. Con mm -hmm. He's talking about Detroit. No, 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 no. no. Detroit no, won the Gold I Cup? Don't, I don't even know what it's no. called. I Detroit's in the Gold Cup? You guys in Concafa? No, 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 no. <laughs> what are you talking about? You can't just right. say we won something and I, have Detroit FC, I saw DCFC. D yeah, there you go, Detroit FC. DCFC, yeah. What the hell do they play in? Is that MLS? Mickey Moss Cup. Washington's nah, yeah. got a team. No, it's some, I told you you don't care about it. I tried to say. What is this? What league is this? <laughs> is this the MSL, PSL? I, I actually have no clue. The National what? Independent Soccer Association. Oh, oh Detroit gets a big win. They're like a powerhouse in the league, I guess, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, Mike. The only team. What else do you want to talk about, dude? Um, I would I would like to acknowledge um, the head of the table, the uh, best of all time, the uh, greatest of a generation. Um, um, I would like to also acknowledge the Usos. Um, Thank you, Usos. Thanks, Usos. How did um how did how did Ray kick out? Well, that's <laughs> still asking ourselves that. Yeah. I don't know how Ray Mysterio does anything. Ray no. does. He's unbelievable. That guy. Lightning rock. He got cheated last night. They'll talk about the Montreal screw job, but will anybody talk about the Cowtown crab shoot? Cowtown. <laughs> the Cowtown. I don't know. Something. If I had more sleep, probably get there quicker. <laughs> yeah. But they got screwed. The Mysterios got screwed. Oh they yeah. Did. 
by the Usos. By my guys. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm an Uso penitentiary forever. Yeah, but... <laughs> A point and smile <laughs> really sold it. That too. Yeah, but it, that's nothing against the Usos. They got away with it. They beat the ref. Yeah. Like, yeah. But how does the ref not see that? Yeah, question. it's. I've asked that a lot of times. The internet wasn't happy. Well, Rey Mysterio, either. the first ever, ever father son tag team champs. It ends with the Usos obviously cheating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what happens when the head of the table is the head of the table. You know, uh, <laughs> the belts stay in the family. So as we're shuffling out from commentary to the Raw team. Roman and the Usos are talking, but we're getting shuffled out. And then all of a sudden, about 20 minutes before we go back out there, I'm like, yo, what the fuck was said between yeah. Roman? Is there anything for this particular, like, legit, did they say anything earlier? And Mike Cole goes, what? I'm like, in that promo that we weren't allowed to listen to because we're getting shuffled out of here? He was like, ah, oh, don't, don't worry about it. I'm like, no, I should, we should worry about that, right? He was like, well, I heard it. And I was like, well, how'd you hear? He's got an ear thing in it at all times. Really? So while I'm walking out there completely like, hey, hey, how's it going? There's like a major thing happening. Michael Cole's listening, probably taking notes. And then I ask him what happened. He's like, I don't worry about it. I'm like, fucking hey. So I actually asked the news. Oh, yeah? What they said? I said, what the hell was going on with you and Roman? He talked to you guys. What happened? He was like, yo, same old, you know, same old. Just- <laughs> it being news. Same old, same old. It was awesome. It was fantastic. But I had like a little moment of like, Oh shit, that was like two hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Something did Where something happen that I should know here. Let's go to Brandon in Illinois. What's going on, Brandon? Yo, what's up, guys? Hey, not too shabby. What do you want to talk about? Uh shit. Uh so, last so week uh, you got you got a little caught with uh some smoke on screen, I remember. Uh, sage. Burning some sage and yeah. I would just let you know I got experience in some sage and potentially doped up, you know, uh so I know the difference. <laughs> so that was definitely sage smoke. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, we'll no. let YouTube. We'll call Mr. Google or Mrs. Google. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We'll let him know. Yeah, yeah. That this should be full monetization. That's right. Right now. It's our business. Yeah, also. Uh, Fucking uh, good vibes. Also, Tory Pines. Tory Pines. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to that tournament if you're in, uh, invited next year. So. Thank you, Brandon. It's not a Tory Pines. Tory What's Pines. Tory Pines? Tory Pines. Yeah, what is Tory Pines? California, I believe. That's not where the Tahoe thing is. Well, that's the type of shit you can get on the five hour energy phone line. That's oh! right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we yeah. forgot. We forgot. Did you reference the five hour energy phone line, AJ? Yeah, I did a few times. Did you tell him to go to five hour energy.com? That's the number five, then our energy.com. Use promo code MACFI and you receive 10% off your order. Only valid through September 30th. Get to it. Let's wow. Go. That's a long time. <laughs> September 30th is a long time. Yeah, but it'll sneak up on you. Hey, we need some urgency, okay? September 30th is coming before you even fucking know it. That's right. Exactly. 5hourenergy.com. That is number 5hourenergy.com. Use promo code McAfee. Shout out to the 5 Hour Energy phone lines. Last call of the day was the first call of the day that ended up getting cut off. Dakota in Georgia wrapping this thing up. What do you want to talk about, bub? How are we doing today, boys? Hey, sorry I missed you earlier. Came on to a hard out. Had to do it. Uh, You're good. Um, first, I just want to give a shout out to my boy Jordan West. Uh, he was supposed to get married yesterday, but he's currently fighting uh, the old testy cancer for the third time. Uh, so, got good luck home. out there, just Mr. West. Good good luck. Shout out. Mr. West, Mr. West, good luck out there, sir. Thank you for that shout. Normally, not a big shout out show from the Five Hour Energy phone lines. A lot of people calling for me to hang up on you immediately within the studio. Happy we got through that without doing that. Shout out to Jordan West. Hope everything's okay. Let's kick some ass. What else you want to talk about? Um, so next Monday is the uh, Packers shareholders meet. Mm-hmm. So I was wondering, do they have any kind of control to kind of put some pressure on the front office to? kind of resolve this Rodgers situation. And what's the over-under going to be on how many times Ty Smith's going to smack old Murph across the mouth? All right, great question, Dakota. We appreciate you for, you know, hanging around, asking a good question. I did not know that shareholders meeting was a week from now. Do you need a deck? Are we pitching anything? Yeah. Are you just sitting there? What is this like? Well, I've never been, but I've heard that the shareholders meeting is typically you go in the stadium, they herd you around like cattle and say, hey, you know, thanks for – for being a shareholder, and that's about it. I don't think there's a whole lot of no, outside of that. You got to change that. You got to get a deck ready to go. Well, you got to hey, get a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. You got to let them know that you ain't standing for this. My money that I spent to become a shareholder of this beautiful franchise has been wasted, manipulated, and taken advantage of. Now some power-hungry punks have gotten in there and turned this thing into something I never thought it was going to be, mm. especially when I became a shareholder. You're not going to say that? Well, listen, we have clip after clip after clip that we can just show them and say, hey, you remember this? You remember this? 
You remember this? But I think now, you know, with the news coming out that Rodgers is getting his house cleaned, I mean, we have no reason to think he's not going to be around. Everything's good in Green See, Bay right so now. See, so he's cleaning his house. I was hoping you were maybe going to go in there as a shareholder and clean house as well. Oh, hey, listen, oh, I'd man. love to. I'd love to. Oh, you would? Go. Then go. Right. No one's stopping you. Go. Go. Yeah. 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 Go. Go. Get the people go. Put a, put get a there. deck together. Yes. Are you kidding me? Go in the middle of the week? I mean, I got to work. No, that would be working. It's Sunday, right? Is it a Sunday? I don't know when the fucking thing is. I mean, shit. Oh, so yeah, get, go that. get your big old dick out there, Come and on. you you let them know, and you let them have it. Hey, if you need me to go up there and let them know. I don't need you. Know, I don't need you. The Packers need the you. The cheeseheads now, need you, Ty. They need you, Ty. Probably one plane in, one plane out, too. So yeah, you know, well. You got to book that soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's the show. <laughs> hey, Gumpy, hey, hammer down. I can drive there. That's a long drive. Yeah, it's like seven and a half hours. Have fun. That's not bad. That's not bad. You can do that with your eyes closed. Yeah, Tim bad. McAfee did 19 the other day. Yeah, it was yeah. easy. Straight through the night. Did this weekend? I mean, you know, <laughs> with the gas prices where they're at right now, <laughs> yeah. it's just. Yeah. Much rather take a plane. That's right. Burn through all this. Gas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going or not? I mean, I need to figure out how I can actually get in there, what, what's going on, but I'd go oh, shit. I mean, you know, the thing about it is if you don't go, we're going to treat you like how those uh, super well-read snobs act with people that don't vote. You yes. Know I mean? yeah. Yes. You didn't vote. You don't have to say anything. It's like, okay, fucking hero. Appreciate you. All right. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of what we'll have to yeah. do to you if you don't go to the shareholders meeting and nothing happens. We did all vote, though. You had a bingo. But I'm just saying, maybe people don't vote because they don't know what the right answer is and they sure. don't want to fucking be a, a menace to society's decision that is the biggest. Mm -hmm. But instead, you got the... Oh, you, you ain't worth a fuck. You didn't vote. It's like, okay, maybe we should tell them, like, hey, next time maybe read up a little bit so you know what you're thinking about. Yeah. Hey, next time go ahead and get in there as opposed to the, you don't have a say in the matter. Okay. I wish you didn't have a say in the matter. Yeah. Uh, 2021 annual meeting of shareholders. Uh, Ty, if you do not go, you have no say in the matter because you are a shareholder mm -hmm. and you're deciding not to go to the annual meeting. The 2021 annual meeting of shareholders will be held Monday, July 26 at 11 a.m. in Lambeau Field. Shareholders should receive their meeting materials by mid to late June. Have you already got your shit? As pandemic conditions continue to change, any COVID-19 protocols for the meeting will be finalized and posted on Packers.com and PackersOwner.com. Do you ever? Do I've you, never been to PackersOwner.com. What is this guy? So. We have the worst Packers what is on, on time? Of all time. As the meeting date nears, attendees are asked to be prepared to wear masks and sit in a socially distant manner. Be prepared for that. I'm wearing distant. a fucking mask. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is manner for the guidance from local medical and health experts at the time of the meeting to view the parking map for the shareholder uh, meeting. Click here. All right, so let's get you on that map. Let's get oh, you at Packers owner. You gotta get kicked out. Ty needs to go and get kicked out and make a scene. All right, what the fuck is all this about? Well, I get this for that. I ain't wearing no fucking mask. <laughs> I doubt anyone will be upset with you. <laughs> hey, somebody's going to do that. Dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, PackersOwner.com is getting a lot of like, hey, do you have any special requests? And a lot of them is going to be, here. this ain't a request. This is an announcement. I want a fucking <laughs> mask. I got vaccinated. So this is a great transition, and we are a real show. Greg Sankey, SEC commissioner. The man who came out one day or two days after the Big Ten said that we ain't playing the season, this guy came out and said, oh, SEC, we're playing football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to make this happen. We're going to have socially distanced. We'll only have a certain percentage of people in the crowd. And then as the season went on, he was right. They did have a season. And that percentage of crowd I don't think was monitored that closely throughout the entire thing. The SEC baseball, SEC football, SEC sports in general under Greg's leadership have – not deterred one bit. They have stared down COVID in the world stoppage and said, it's different down here, uh -huh. which is actually SEC's motto. Mm -hmm. It's different down here. He has come out once again talking about the fall schedule, and he has basically said, do we have it? Pulling it up. Oh, Jesus. What did he say? Well, he said, 
get vaccinated or not, we're fucking filling the stadiums in the fall. Boom. <laughs> Basically what Greg Sankey really? said. I, I wanted to, to read his actual quote because I'm sure there's some lawyering in there. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey, this is via Brody A. Miller. And Brody A. Miller didn't fuck around. Nope. <laughs> SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey announces games will not be rescheduled this fall due to COVID. It is up to teams to get vaccinated. If they don't have enough, they may have to forfeit. Six of 14 SEC teams have reached the 80% vaccination threshold, he said. So he's saying, listen, we ain't rescheduling shit. Okay, you either get the vaccination, you move, we're going to keep it moving. Greg Sankey of the SEC has had the same exact position on this thing, pandemic, post-pandemic, pre-pandemic. Greg Sankey has been heralded by a lot of people for the way he's handled it, as opposed to what happened in the Big Ten, in the Ivy League, and in the Pac-12. Who knows how this whole thing pans out, because I've heard this Delta strain. Oh, hey, this uh-oh. Delta strain, it ain't Delta Airlines, okay? Uh-huh. There ain't no, is it going to be there? Is it going to be late? Allegedly, this Delta Airlines strain coming from COVID-19 is a son of a bitch. Uh-huh. And Greg Sankey said, that ain't about, we don't care. We're playing. Get vaccinated and move on. That's just very fascinating stuff on how the rollout post COVID nineteen with everything going on. AJ, hey, how's it work though? If you if your team has eighty percent vaccinated, do they still test them like weekly or daily or before games? Well, and then the twenty percent or nineteen percent that isn't tested, do they have to live by an entirely different set of standards and codes with masks and separation and doing the meeting from their own meeting and having to Zoom call in? Like I think what was being said in the NFL to coaches. And players, you either get vaccinated uh, or if you don't, you have to coach remote. You'll have to do your meetings from remote. You'll have to wear masks. You'll have to do this entire thing. It's an insane time to be alive. This is going to be talked about 50, 60, maybe even 100 years from now in this whole rollout. But it's a wild time. I've no, I, I want to dance on COVID's grave very badly. Uh-huh. I've been doing Good it for work. a while. But it seems like COVID ain't going to fucking stop. It no. seems like we're still in it a little bit. Did you see... Um where the NFL is, they're, they're talking about trying to come up with a way to visually know if somebody is vaccinated or not, like make them wear wristbands. There's no way they're going to be able to do that. Okay, so wristbands and then the passports in Europe and then the vaccination cards here. And what's that getting compared to? Obviously, in the past, things have happened. It has not been glorious. And this is not just one particular party, by the way. I know people from both parties yeah. that are very either anti getting the vaccine because hey they ain't doing research on this shit on me is what they said or very pro vaccine on both sides saying hey the quicker we get back the better for everything and it's just this is insane it does feel like situations are situational here this is something that blurs party lines once again i don't know enough about politics to really dive into that conversation but i know it has made its way into my world because sports are involved in this heavily but i've seen people from both parties extremes almost torn on this thing so i don't know how you get an answer normally you know in the politics game from what i've learned from looking outside one particular party shows up and goes ah right Uh Mm -hmm. and then that other particular party right on cue since the beginning of time somehow with the energy they had the day before the day before and they will have forever they look right back and they go "Ah!" and then this party rebuttals okay Somehow with even more ferocity. Yeah! And then this party goes, oh, did you hear what they did? Rally, rally, bring everybody together. Whole crew comes. Ah! And then they just do that on repeat until nothing gets settled or decided upon. One decision will be made in either this particular yeller or this particular yeller is gonna be pissed. This particular yeller will not get lost in the moment of satisfaction of something good happening, by the way. They will move along to the next thing that they can. Ah! And then this one, Ah! right on cue. And I feel like that's politics. And with this vaccine thing, it feels like this one's yelling, and there's some people behind potentially facing this way. Oh. Hey, nah, I ain't with you. Nah, I ain't with you. And then this side. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> it is. I just hope we get back to the world. I don't know what's right. I don't know what's wrong. I do know, hey, let's go and keep it moving. Right here. People have right their here. own stance. You can be a fucking human, but at some point, there's going to be something that's going to have to give on both sides. That's kind of how this whole thing pans out, right? What's up, Kevin? Uh, different topic, but I think it's breaking news. Go ahead. Um, Ten games a year. For the next three seasons, Eli and Peyton are going to have a 
alternate Monday Night Football telecast on ESPN2 nice. during the game. Are they going to be at Sweet. the stadium or are they going to be no. like zooming from home? It looks like remote location. All right, Monday Night Football megacast announcement. This is from ESPN? Yes. Okay, ESPN PR. ESPN and the Walt Disney Company announce a new partnership with Peyton Manning and Omaha Productions. Three, wow. three seasons, too. They signed up for three seasons right away. Omaha, Omaha, oh, oh. Omaha, Omaha Productions, Omaha. Now, is their logo literally him with his right foot forward and then his left foot coming back up onto the saddle? <laughs> it's got to be. Is that the Productions? That's no, awesome. I think it's that weird, goofy logo there. Yeah, but they got to have an active. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. got to have a ball bouncing yep. into the thing. I hope so. Headlined by an alternate Monday Night Football telecast featuring Peyton and Eli. This will be good. Okay. Oh. This will be good. Uh, Peyton and Eli from remote locations. Celebrities including iconic and current players will join a new Monday Night Football megacast offering airs on ESPN2, potential distribution across Disney properties. Compliments, traditional telecasts on ESPN. <laughs> Good luck, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Produced in conjunction Yikes. with Omaha Productions, 2021, 2022, 2023 NFL seasons, 10 games each season. Congrats to the Mannings. And congrats to football people. Hopefully, uh -huh. I watched another mega cast on a show in the conversations and interviews were just a podcast interview and it, they weren't even watching the game, it uh -huh. felt like. I think Peyton and Eli will be able to tie this thing back to the game strictly because how much Peyton will love the game that's going on and things that are going on. If he'll be able to have the same control over film like uh, Hasselbeck, Teddy Bruschi and them had to potentially break something down, this could be amazing. I wish he was in the stadium. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish he was in but it never is. Like when they do this for the national championship, I think that are multiple different options of these mega casts. They're all sitting around. I think Witten did one for the Super Bowl. They sit around a table and watch. But the one I actually thought was really good was when they ha they have like four or five college coaches watching the national championship, and then they uh, talk about like they you know good. they have a million stories. They'll <laughs> diagram stuff. They'll try to predict what's happening. Like I enjoy that. Yeah, I enjoy what you just said, and that makes sense because you're AJ Hawk. Literally, focus group studied and proven. The most well received telecast on the mega cast was us on the sideline. Uh, Steve Levy was there. He got Monday Night Football. Dan mm -hmm. Orlovsky goes on to be Dan Orlovsky. Mm -hmm. Adam Amin goes to Fox, and then me running around on the sideline for 25 hours straight. I was on. Yeah. That was a great time, but we were in the stadium. You know, like that's when you're there, it's much different than the yeah. watch along mm -hmm. style at home. But there has to be some separator from. Uh, either Joe Rogan's fight companion, because mm. now you're keep Peyton's gonna have to keep up with Barstool does watch alongs, WWE does watch alongs. But they can't show Barstool can't show the game. ESPN two they can show the game on the channel. Well, that's what I'm saying. They have to take advantage of what separates them. ESPN has the rights to all this shit. They have to separate them from an internet show because all these people. If you're a sports network and you don't have rights but you're still on the FCC regulated TV and everything. Oh. You're just competing against us on the internet and you got FCC rules and none of the access that all the other TV people have that have FCC rules so they can get around that with their rights and things like that. Other than that, you're just competing. Peyton's gonna have full film breakdown. Yeah. They're gonna have a full, I hope they take advantage of it fully like they did in Peyton's places with how nice that thing was together. And Omaha Productions ain't fucking around. Yeah, my deepest condolences to Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Lewis Riddick because holy shit, I don't think many people are gonna be We don't know how it's over. gonna go though. In the stadium is much different. For sure, but if it's Peyton and Eli talking football, and Peyton, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, you're gonna wanna hear what that guy's saying. And also incredibly entertaining. Yeah, yeah. funny. Him and Eli's like, back and forth. He's like a history book of football. Yeah, like Peyton. Yeah, yeah. He's super quick, he's super funny. I, I told you on Peyton's places, and he's going to make fun of Eli the whole time. Yes. Eli will make fun of him. And what guests will they have? The guests they'll have on will be great. Tom will probably call in. I, mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be yeah. Two good chains. luck. Hey, this is ESPN getting Peyton on Monday Night Football. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In Peyton's fashion. I don't want to have to travel to fucking games. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do you want to work? I don't want to work with anybody. Yeah. Can we just put Eli in there? All right, let's is go he going to make Eli come to him? Eli's definitely going to come to him, I bet. To have a studio wherever Peyton's living. Is he in Denver? I wonder whether all Peyton has, he is the face of Denver now. He has houses in other places. Eli probably has houses in other places as well. Who knows where they'll do it from. It'll be run very well, though. I can't wait for it. That is breaking news. Congrats to the Mannings. Yeah. Good work. Thank you to the Mannings. That'll be awesome to watch. I'll enjoy that yeah, a lot. Yeah, I'm jacked up for that. <laughs> Me too. Right. Maybe Cooper. Cooper will show up, too. He yeah. will. Oh, yeah. By the way, College oh, yeah. Bowl is a great fucking show. The Love Omaha it. Productions is mm -hmm. slaughtering it very quietly, by the way. Mm -hmm. Peyton's not out there doing a bunch of articles about how he's his production company's creating this and that. Peyton's Places, College great. Bowl, now this. 
He's hitting home runs and dingers. Let's yeah. go. The Manning family is normally pretty calculated, well thought out, and not going to do something unless they're going to do well. That's just kind of the Manning family. I've got a chance to witness them, and I would like to say that I was the best wine drinker in the house <laughs> numerous times when I was there. Shout out to Archie. All right. My dad meets Archie Manning for the first time. And, uh, you know, Archie had just got done drinking some red wine, I believe. And Archie, my dad loved Archie, like loved. My dad, big time Steelers fan, but the Aints and Arch, like he like loved Archie Manning. So meeting him was a big deal. We get off the elevator at Peyton's condo or whatever, and Archie's just waiting basically with like a bottle of wine or whatever. Mr. McAfee, how's it going? And my dad just like fucking dream. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it was like they were best friends for the entire night. It was, uh, they are a cool group, but don't get it twisted. They dominate. That yeah. is what they are trying to. They, it is not like, a, hey, we're doing things just to do things. We're doing things to take over things. Like it is. It's very cool to kind of watch them operate. Monday Night Football, Telecast, or Megacast, whatever simulcast. Watch along will be awesome. Yep. Yeah. Can't wait. All right. We're back tomorrow. What time's uh, hammered down? About 15 minutes? Yeah. 3.35. AJ, thank you, man, for uh, Friday. That was really cool of you. All right. Thank you. You need to get some rest, man. You got another big weekend coming up. Yeah. Now, this one's uh, a lot easier here. Cleveland's short flight. True. I'll, I'll are you going to Miami? Up. What are you doing? I, you're right. I'm assuming I'm going to Cleveland, but I haven't been told anything differently. But if I'm going So to, is the WWE in Miami at the same time? I don't know. I don't like I I don't know. I don't it's very I very confusing know how you laid this all out. It's very confusing. I didn't lay it out. They laid yeah, it out. They told us. I, I, I don't and it's but kinda, so SmackDown or, or SmackDown's Friday night in Cleveland, in right? In Cleveland. Yeah. And then when is this other deal happening? Right. Rolling Loud is Friday as well. The concert is oh. this weekend. So I think there's going to be some matches there, but will people be there? Will people be – I think I'm going as if I'm going to be in Cleveland, calling the matches in Florida until otherwise. And hopefully somebody that knows the answer is watching right now yeah. <laughs> and tells me, tells me the answer. But I – On the website right now, it says split site. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I don't know. It, and I wanted to follow up with this. I think I maybe am the first person in the history of this company that they have, by design, said, let's not tell him anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. let's not tell. And it's worked. Like, it has worked. Yeah. There are things that I have to know, but it is by design to not tell me anything almost. It's like, let's just see his experience through yeah. this entire. Let's see what happens. When they can't trust you either. They know if they tell you anything, it'll get leaked. I mean, you can trust me. I'm all you know. I'm fucking. Can you? Are you? I'm a steel trap. Self admit, trap. you're the one that says all the time. Don't tell me. Don't tell me because I can't. You know. Can't, well, that's can't that's the thing. In. I would tell them if they were about to tell me something, not to tell me. And I think they have. I think they trust me enough to tell them on something they shouldn't tell me. Mm -hmm. Hey, big surprise that I don't tell anybody. Don't, don't, don't tell it. me. Don't want to hear. Don't it. tell me. <laughs> if it, that is kind of that is that is a me. Don't do not tell me. Hey, need you to know about blah 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 because but okay, I would like to hear that. That isn't that big of a deal. But if it's potentially some, don't tell me. I'm gonna fucking let yeah. it eat. I'm just gonna. Oh, I can't believe. Hey, John Cena is gonna be here Sunday. Imagine if I. Oh man. <laughs> hey, Josh, your scene is gonna oh, be here Sunday. <laughs> Houston was amazing. Wait until John <laughs> Cena shows up on Sunday. You know, like that is something I'd be so excited for. And I, I wonder how long people knew for, and how many people knew. Okay. Like now, that's my question. Not many. I bet there's not many. I bet yeah. they keep it super secret. Very few. Like two to four people, I think. You didn't see him, anyone see him backstage? That would be the hardest thing, like getting him into the arena. So this arena, okay, because they're running so many goddamn Texas Longhorns through there. It was huge. We got lost three times yeah. going to the goddamn catering. It was the the, un the underground the where they feed in all these swine and is cattle. Is this Joel Osteen's uh -huh. church, or is this where the Rockets play? <laughs> this is Dickie's <laughs> Arena. This is uh, in Fort Worth, not in Houston. I'm talking oh, about okay. in Fort Worth, though. He, the, there could have been... Parts of that arena that he could have been in that nobody would have seen him because it was so it was so it was so big, huge. Catering was, yeah. catering was. And I, I thought I was gonna miss the show. I was like, I gotta go eat real quick or whatever. And he walked. It was a thirty-five minute yeah. walk, and they were like, we gotta get all the way fucking back now. I mean, it was that place. That Dickies Arena was vast. It was very yeah. very large, especially underneath because all the goddamn trailers. I think that have to come in there. I thought I saw he was like right next to the stage too. Like he had the closest room to the, uh, like where he walked. Cena out. did. Yeah, Cena did. They probably moved him in there late. Though. Late. He yeah. was probably in a bus outside mm -hmm. with it. So when Hardys came back at WrestleMania, they had hoods on them and they kept him in a bus outside. Yeah. So. And then as the as 
they were sprinting out while their music was about to hit. So the only time anybody saw them is like as right they were going. Through. Oh, that's why they do the RV stuff inside yeah. like that? Well, they do the RV stuff because a lot of guys travel in those. Yeah. Like during the day, instead of hanging out in the locker room, they'll have, a, and by the way, if you get a bus that's like getting like a made man almost, yeah. or a made woman, yeah. In the WWE, it's a biggie deal. Not a lot of people have it. But it is a normal thing for buses because they're they're on tour, they're rock stars. They So a little bit of comfort, a little bit of home if somebody has a family, a baby or something like that, that kind of becomes their house on the road or whatever. But there are so many buses, they can add another one in there. Like, hey, this is a hideout one. And it's one of the, I think that has happened in the past. Undertaker, I think they did the same thing to him. So maybe that's what happened with Cena. We should have kept an eye out. But that Dickies Arena was so oh, fucking big. Rocking. I, I was just in cowboy boots. Just fucking, <laughs> oh my God, dude. I ain't going to be able to make it here. Shout bring to a little, Bring a little hoverboard next time. What what goes on in that arena? Who plays? What Gosh, events do they do other than yeah. like rodeo? Uh, I think concerts. I think they do the whole thing. Uh -huh. A lot of rodeos, a lot of auctions in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of cattle auctions, swine auction, everything. It, the town was a whole state fair. Mm -hmm. the, Fort Worth was a state fair. That's what it was. And you dropped in a movie. It was a state fair. It was fucking awesome. Incredible. Great. But Look good. Cleveland. You'll have the same experience in Cleveland, too. Hey, Cena could have been standing there the whole time, by the way. We didn't see him. Yeah, true. <laughs> you blended in. <laughs> Make sure, hey, take uh, Nick with you next time. What's that, buddy? Take Nick with you to meet Cena next time. You know, the issue with Nick is... Uh, Nick's such a big fan, it'd be hard to contain his excitement, yeah. I think. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we yeah. kind of got to, especially now for the next couple weeks. I don't know yeah. if now's the time to yeah. put you on. Right. Yeah, after Cena. Yeah. Oh, Cena. <laughs> <laughs> Après Cena. Après right. Cena, yeah. Next event at uh, Dickey Stadium or Arena. Uh, it's going to be Dude Perfect and the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah. All wow. Right. See you guys tomorrow. In the same night? Match made in heaven. Yeah, Hell it's yeah. going to be awesome. That's like when NSYNC, the Backstreet Boys, and uh, New Kids on New the Block all team up. Yeah. Yep. You got Dude Perfect in Harlem Globetrotters. Are you kidding me? I'm fucking buying that ticket yep. today. Let's go. All, all right. right. Hell yeah. <laughs>